call this meeting to order. This is the uh, Wednesday, March 2nd meeting of the Fairfax County History Commission. So good, good evening, everybody. Um, and thank you to all of our guests who are here today, as well as all the commissioners. Um, uh, I am going to note that uh, Gretchen Boulevard and Stunts and Phyllis Walker Ford and also Elise Murray are excused um, for this evening for various reasons. Mm -hmm. um, sort of unusual that we have this many commissioners not here, and, but everybody has travel plans and um, Elise unfortunately is also not feeling that well. So, springtime allergies, I suspect. Anyway, so I I'm going. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to uh, conduct to, in order to conduct this meeting wholly electronically. The History Commission needs to make certain findings for the record um, to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. These motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Mary Lipsy. Mary Lipsy and uh, from Braddock District is here. Carol Herrick. Carol, I saw you. I did too. Carol, you're muted. Maybe she stepped. Oh, she's there. She's there. I'm going to come back to you, Carol. Um, Subi Medi. Subi Medi, Drainsville. You're District. muted, Carol. Barbara Nath. Barbara Nath, Reston Hunter Mill. Steve Sherman. Steve Sherman in Franconia, representing Lee District. Barbara Peters. Barbara Peters, Annandale, Mason District. Ann Barnes. And maybe joining us later, uh, Sally Lyons. Sally Lyons in Colchester, Mount Vernon District. Tammy Manorino. Tammy Manorino, Mount Vernon District. No. Sue Kovacs Schumann, I haven't seen Sue, is she here? Come back to her, Janae Linder. Sue is having trouble getting into the meeting. I'm helping her right now. Okay, thank you so much, Denise. Janae, Janae. Linder. Janae Linder. Linder, sorry. Sorry, Janae Linder, <laughs> Fairfax, Springfield District. I'll, I'll learn not to pronounce that D eventually. Jordan Tannenbaum. Can you hear me, Jordan Tannenbaum here? Spring, okay, great, Springfield. How do you get more people on the screen? Those folks, how do you do that? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Teams. Oh. Teams, unlike Zoom, Zoom will have lots and lots of little boxes, but yeah. um, Teams seems to sort of have a limitation. And I don't know exactly what um, what determines, you know. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's okay. Just that, that answers the question. Thank you. Yeah. Jordan, um, you're the only one who can see us. What? what? I'm the only one who can see you. Yeah. 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 I see you now. So when people talk, you can see them, and I just see four people. Um, yeah. If I may, this is Laura Wickstead. Um, Jordan, at the top of my screen, I have an ellipsis, three dots. So yeah. there, and if I click on that, and I'm on gallery view, and I see nine of you in one view. Wow. Yeah. Right. No, right. So right. I can't do. I can't do gallery view. I only have disable mic for attendees and disable camera for attendees. Huh. And that same and that same little three dots. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have gallery view either. Oh, but really? nine is the most that you can get, I believe. That's what I have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank ah, you guys. All right. Thank well, you. we'll have to work on that. Okay. Laura Thanks. out. Excuse me. That's okay. Thank you. Esther McCullough. <laughs> Esther McCullough, sorry. We're already, we, we're not even five minutes in and chaos reigns. Um, <laughs> Bob Beach. <laughs> Jordan started it. Yeah, uh, Robert Beach. <clears throat> I know I saw Bob earlier too. He may have stepped away. Uh, Lynn Garvey Hodge. Lynn Garvey Hodge, Commissioner at Large, Springfield District. David Meyer. 
Uh, yeah, David may not be, be joining us later. Carol, Carol Herrick, can we hear you can now? Can you or hear you? me now? Yay. Yes, All I can. Right. It's Carol Herrick, McLean, Drainsville District. Okay. And uh, has Anne joined us yet? Ann Barnes? Not yet. Sue Kovac Schumann, can you can we hear you now? Have you managed to log on successfully? Denise, are we still working on that? I sent <clears throat> I sent Sue the link um, again in a separate email, but I do not see her logged on. Um, I did send Bob Beach the telephone number so he can call in so we can at least hear him. I so can you see Bob. Oh, wait, uh, uh, I can, there we no, go. Wait, can, wait, wait. Yep. I just heard. Go ahead, Bob. Bob Beach, we're doing roll call. Yeah, sure. Architect at large, Fairfax. There we go. Awesome. Um, and I says, David, I don't think it's with us yet. I, I don't think, think we. Either. Let me just do a quick one. OK, we can proceed um, and hopefully um, Sue and Anne and David will be joining us later. Um, but, uh, so at this point, I will uh, pass the virtual gavel to uh, Lynn Garvey Hodge, my vice chair, so that I can make the appropriate motions. I move that the History Commission certify for the record that each member's boss voice <laughs> may be adequately heard by each okay. other member of this board. Second. Then you want to call the vote? Yeah, I'm go uh, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carried. OK, thank you. Second, I move that the History Commission certify that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission and the phys public to physically attend this meeting in person, and the usual procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the Fairfax County History Commission conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line, and that the public may access this meeting by calling 1-844-621-3956 and enter ac access code 1792, whoops, sorry, excuse me, access code 862-193-322. Second. Thank you. All Here right, is. any um, abstains or nays? Hearing none, and all A's, go ahead. Aye. 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 Right. Motion carried. Okay. And finally, I move that the History Commission certify that the matters on its agenda today relate to COVID-19 emergency itself, are necessary for the continuity in Fairfax County government, and <laughs> or are statutorily required for necessary um, or necessary to continue the operations and the discharge of the History Commission's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstains Aye. or objections? Hearing none, the motion is carried. All right. So can I retrieve that gavel? There you go. Thank you. And uh, so we're going to start the evening with a presentation. We have, I did not um, ask for voice check with um, our various guests. Um, hopefully everybody will, will, will work all those technical details out. Um, but uh, the African American History Inventory Database um, has been, or, been worked on by our GMU capstone students. and. They are, and I'm going to, uh, I apologize in advance for mispronouncing people's names, um, Akbar Suri, Roman Patrick, Samuel Pitch, Ferdinando uh, Galzara, no, Galaraza, Brian Doe, and Steve Chenko, Chuko, 
um, are here tonight to give us a presentation on that database. So if you all uh, welcome, and I'm not sure who is taking the lead on, on this. Hello, everyone. This would be uh, Akbar. Nice to meet you all. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, my name is Akbar Suri, uh, and I'm part of the uh, capstone group that has taken on this project. Um, so uh, I have a short presentation ready to show you guys, um, just giving a quick background on the project. Uh, and then uh, we have a live demonstration to show for you uh, at the end of my presentation, just a quick rundown of uh, the site that we have built so far. Uh, and then, you know, we'll open the floor for any questions for any individuals. Um, so um, unless there's any questions, I can go ahead and get started on the uh, presentation. So I'll go ahead and share my screen for you all. Upper, I'm sorry, I see a hand uh -huh. raised. Cheryl, can you see that? Yes, actually, I do. Jordan, it's um, your hands raised. Do you no, have a question? Sorry. No, no. <laughs> Okay. Just right. just getting some exercise, that's all. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Got you there. All right. Okay. So I'll go ahead and switch over to uh, sharing my screen. And then let me switch over to the PowerPoint. Um, so we are Alpha Team 4. Um, and we are working on the African American History Inventory. Uh, so quick background on the team. We're all seniors at George Mason studying IT. Uh, we're in our last semester. Uh, and we've been working on this project um, since the beginning of the previous semester, so last August. Uh, and we've been working directly with the uh, Commissioner Ford and Commissioner Lipsy um, since about September uh, to implement this project. Um, me and my team members, um, myself, uh, I'm Akbar Suri, I'm the team lead. Uh, we have Brian Doe, he's working on web development. Fernando Galarza is working on database programming uh, alongside with me. Uh, and then we have three individuals uh, focused on cybersecurity, uh, Steve Chioku, Samuel Pitch, uh, and Roman Patrick. Uh, and everyone is here in this meeting tonight, uh, with the exception of Roman. He's dealing with a, a personal family matter, so um, he couldn't be here with us tonight, but uh, he's definitely sending his best over. Um, just a quick introduction on the uh, project. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with the African American Historical Inventory, um, but uh, for anyone who might not be, uh, it was approved in October of 2020 for the development uh, and for a research inventory of African American resources to facilitate the knowledge and preserve the history of African Americans in our area. The community was formed in January of 2021 and it's led directly by the Commissioner Ford and Commissioner Lipsy, who we've been working with. Uh, and the inventory is going to include things like African American contributions, churches, homes, individuals, communities, and more. Um, going into how we're basically building the database, uh, over the past few months, we've been receiving templates from the individual commissioners uh, through Commissioner Lipsy and Commissioner Ford. Uh, and we've basically been going through those templates, itemizing them, uh, cleaning up the data, and putting them into uh, our cloud database. Um, once entries are added to the database, they're publicly available. Uh, and they're, uh, it's in a searchable website that can be accessed anywhere with an internet connection. Uh, and the database is scalable uh, to be easily updated, grown, uh, and fixed in the future for whatever um, changes that need to be made. The approach that we're taking is, again, a cloud approach. So this is just like a general diagram of uh, how the cloud approach would work. We're not actually using an AWS cloud version, but it is with an on-premise database that's uploaded onto a cloud. And then from there, everything goes directly to users on the computer or phone or you know tablet, whatever device that they want to browse the database on. Um, late in 2021, uh, we entered into an agreement um, with the GMU libraries and specifically the Fenwick library department to uh, host the database using their resources. Uh, we're using their first party platform developed by other students actually a number of years ago. Um, it's called Omeka and it's a very strong platform that hosts a number of websites that are sort of similar to the African American historical historical inventory. Uh, and it serves as a great uh, backbone for our project and I believe it's going to 
do really well um, in creating something that we can all be proud of at the end. Uh, we're currently working on a memorandum of understanding to be formally um, finalized between the two parties, uh, and that should be finished by May. Um, and once we have everything in place, uh, me and my fellow team members will be uh, graduating in May, hopefully. <laughs> and um, we are putting in plan, uh, putting into place a plan for a transition so that it can be given to uh, other individuals at the university who can be in contact directly with the History Commission to continue keeping it updated uh, and you know, adding to the database uh, when we are no longer part of the project. So uh, a plan for co continuing uh, is being worked on um, to make sure that the database can keep growing once we're no longer on the project. Um, then just real quick, I have a, a live demo for you guys. So I'm gonna switch over to a browser and this is basically a pretty bare bones version of the website that we have going right now. Uh, right now, when you click on the home page, it will take you to recently added items, but we want to add on uh, like a, you know, more pleasant to view, uh, you know, welcoming home page that'll probably feature some items as an exhibit uh, and then give links to browse other items. There'll be an about page that we're going to fill out a little bit more. Uh, and then we also plan on adding a number of exhibits um, that'll showcase the different items that we have. Um, but as of right now, we have, I believe there's over 150 total items that we've been provided. We've entered about 60 of them so far. Um, the items can all be browsed by tag. So you can click on building and see the different types of buildings that are in there. If you click on an item, it'll give you um, a description, date, uh, location. We're also implementing a map uh, so that within the location section, there will also be an actual map where you can see uh, where it is uh, and it'll give you, uh, if you wanted, I, I believe like directions to the uh, individual item. Uh, every item that's being added to the database is being tagged into a collection. So you can browse individual churches or schools or whatever it may be. Uh, and then every item is being classified by uh, their district. So I believe this one is part of the Drainsville district. So. You can click on Drainsville. It'll take you over to all the items that we have in for Drainsville. Uh, and it would be the same for every other item in the database. Um, it's of course searchable. So if you wanna search the database and find an individual object, uh, you can do that. And you can also narrow it down by a number of different things such as specific fields, um, collections by type. Um, so, you know, we wanna make sure that this is a, a resource that people can use extensively uh, and it's very powerful. Um, and, you know, there's gonna be a lot of different things in here that is gonna be unique, I believe, to this website. Um, so we wanna make sure that it's fully searchable, fully usable by all the individuals uh, that wanna use it. Um, so we're working on building as many of those connections and relationships as we can. Um, and this is again, a pretty bare bones version of the site. We wanna, we're definitely gonna be cleaning up a little bit of the look and feel of the site, the color scheme. Uh, we're probably going to be adding the Fairfax County History Commission uh, logo as well as the GMU logo because they are helping us uh, with the partnership uh, with the website and hosting. Um, but in terms of the bones of the project, this is essentially what it would be. Um, every item is going to be in here with their uh, certain things are have pictures and stuff we're working on implementing those as well everything will be cited in terms of the resources where they come from and then all the data is exportable <coughs> in a few different formats as well so um you know people who want to take this information on the website and use it for their own projects would be able to do that as well um so that's just a general sort of rundown of the website um if anyone has any questions for us um i'd be happy to answer them uh or, or for any of my team members, um, you know, we'd be happy to answer any sort of questions you guys might have for us. But thank you for uh, listening to our presentation. Akbar, this is Mary. I just want to add that Hi. we're working on a way of contact. If somebody has questions, um, we're working on how that will be handled. I just wanted to add that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, we're working on a general Q&A page where individuals who are browsing the website can come uh, drop any questions they have about any other resources or items that they have in there. Uh, and if they want any more contacts or information, they, sh they should be able to contact one of the commissioners uh, via email uh, and they'll be able to be responded to with whatever additional information that they might need. So that's something that we're working on right now. May I, have I know Tammy. Oh, go, go ahead, Subi. Oh, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Tammy, after you, my partner. <laughs> you both have your hands up, so it was just okay. a 50-50 call right. there. Uh, all right. Uh, um, so, Akbar, thank you uh, very yeah. much. Um, uh, that's sure. really, really... Uh, this is Commissioner uh, Subi Medi, by the way, from Drainsville. Um, nice to meet you. I, yeah, nice to meet you, too. I know we have c communicated um, via email before. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, this is really has the this really has the potential to be very powerful, um, yeah. especially you know being first of its kinds. I just have some nitty gritty questions. So, sure. um, yeah. so when you say 150 items, you mean uh, mm -hmm. 150 inventory items, right? Yeah. So the individual okay. uh, the the templates that we received. Uh, right. Sorry, let me stop right. sharing my screen. So um, uh, have you categorized them? Uh, we're basically we're putting them in um, by the the first category and the main category is the district that they were uh, assigned to. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we have created certain item types. So there's buildings, there's um school there's people there's oral histories uh and they each have their own unique uh attributes or things that describe them uh mm -hmm. and basically everything that goes into the database will go into one of those categories uh and if it doesn't fit into one of those unique categories we'll probably you know make a new one for it um but we've created about i think 10 or 15 different general categories that i think everything should be able to fit into Okay. Did you mention, I may have uh, not heard it in your presentation, the linkage to the Virginia room in terms of, uh, in terms of um, archival storage and access in, in the future? Are, are, the, you, are you working with them? I'm not familiar, unfortunately, with uh, okay. the Virginia room. Yeah. Okay, um, I, I'm just concerned that uh, wherever you're planning to store it now, I, I, I really didn't grasp where it was, uh, the longevity of that platform. So uh, we came to an agreement, basically towards the end of last semester, we learned that the History Commission could no longer host the project. So I went and talked to individuals at uh, Fenwick Library, which is, the Fairfax campus uh, library for George Mason. And we okay. spoke to a number of different people, including the director of the IT department. Uh, and they decided based on what I told them about what's going into this project, um, the hosting cost for them is not very high uh, and they're happy to do it and cover all those costs um, for, you know, um, not there's not a limited time frame. They said basically in perpetuity, as long as they can, you know, put GMU's name on it and say that they helped, you know, collaborate with us on this project. Because I think they're just as excited to be able to put their name on something like this as we are. So, um, yeah, they've actually generously offered to cover all the costs for us. There's nothing coming out of our pocket. Uh, before, before it goes to Tammy, can just one last one, please, while I have the floor. So, so uh, there is uh, um, proper acknowledgement of mm -hmm. the Fairfax County and Fairfax County's History Commission on your uh, on the homepage. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah, we're still working on building the homepage. You know, we kind of uh, started with the meat and bones, which is the actual items. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this is a history commission project first and foremost, and m all of the um, or a majority of like, you know, the information on the website will be about the history commission, but there will be a mention that it is a collaboration with the George Mason libraries. So uh, and those are the sort of things that we're trying to outline in the memorandum of understanding so that, you know, we do have an idea exactly going forward of how whatever sort of information we put on there is displayed. Um, 
But, you know, every individual I've spoken to at Fenwick understands that this is a History Commission project. Um, and they're just sort of happy to add it to GMU's, I guess, you know, catalog of things that they helped with or worked on. So um, thank you. The, the actual content of the site, a lot of it is text based. You know, there are some images and stuff like that. But, you know, in the grand scheme of hosting and, and the amount of data, text is not that much. You know, it doesn't it's not an overwhelming thing for their system. So I think they're happy to provide those resources for us. Thanks. Mm -hmm. no right, Tammy and then Janae. Great. Um, we're so excited to see this actually become a real database. It was really fun um, to you. see your presentation. So thank you for um, for the whole team's hard work on this. Um, it's really neat to see it, it come alive. Um, uh, so I had questions sort of as a contributor of templates mm -hmm. to this database. Um, there were in some instances we provided you uh, complex templates that were sort of made yes. up of several entities. And I was mm -hmm. interested into, you know, um, did you disassemble those? Because, for example, I'll just yeah. give an example. Mount Vernon had publications. Mm -hmm. It had a cemetery. Um, yeah. You know, it was a site, all of those things. And so did you disassemble those to, in order to put them in? If if something could go in as an entry by itself, like let's there is enough information for it to go as an entry by itself, it is going to be disassembled and go in by itself. But there will be relations pretty much. So within the Mount Vernon Cemetery page, there will be a direct link to any other Mount Vernon oral histories or uh, you know individuals who are associated with that. You know that would be directly on that same page. So that's only for the items that can stand up on their own. So if there are certain things that, that need to be associated with something else, because it's not enough context on its own to go in by itself, then it will would go in as just additional information. Um, but you know, being able to provide things their own entry um, just gives a little bit more, uh, I, I don't know if life is the right word, but like it, it provides more flesh to the database and you know, allows those relations to really play out. Um, so. We have been including the direct links for each page um, to everything it's directly related to. Um, but if it can go in individually, it would go in individually, if that makes sense. I can clear it no, up. No, it, it does. It does. I know just enough okay. about databases to be dangerous. Yeah. And so as I was putting information in, sure. I was like, I feel like they're going to have to take this apart. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. No and worries. I have some more good stuff for you. OK, no worries. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready for it. So. Thank you so much. Sure. Today. Um, hi, I'm real excited about this project and I appreciate you doing this. So you'll be able to sure. walk away when you graduate. I hope you feel very proud of what you're doing. Um, Thank you. I wanted to ask you though a little bit about, unfortunately, because we can't meet together. So maybe mm -hmm. Mary or some of you can answer the question for me. Um, mm -hmm. Have you connected or even thought about working with the, um, what is it called? It's called History and Media uh, Department. Yes. With Fairfax mm -hmm. I, at George Mason University, it's just, they're such a great organization yeah. to do all that scanning. Or did you decide, no, we're gonna go with the library? I'm, I'm just kind of curious. So basically when we, we realized that we would have to find uh, an alternative for the hosting back in mm -hmm. uh, the winter, or I guess late fall, um, we did approach the, the it's the Roy Rose, Rosenzweig Center right. for New Media at GMU. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we also contacted the library, we contacted the IT department, um, and the Roy Rosenzweig Center um, actually pointed us towards Fenwick, especially if we were looking to do it um, for free, uh, which was okay. like, I knew it was, something that would be easier, you know, for the long term of this project um, to, you know, get it like hosted uh, without cost to the History Commission. Um, so, and they also actually felt that it was a better fit for our project as well, because those exhibits in that center were sort of for um, individual collections or mm -hmm. items as opposed right. to a full-fledged database. Um, right. So uh, I definitely think that there's still the opportunity to collaborate with them for some of our more 
maybe like detailed exhibits, they can help us sort of scan objects and put them into the database. But okay. um, we had to meet with a number of different people to find the best home for this project. And that's where we ended up with Fenwick Library. Thank you. Yeah, I just sure. I just wanted to know. Mm -hmm. I, I just admire what they have done so much. Yeah, for sure. So, for sure. Okay. Done some awesome Thank you for, for doing your due diligence. Absolutely. Jordan. Yeah. Akbar, again, congratulations. Thank you to you and Thank your you. colleagues. A terrific job. Just wanted to ask a question as to whether you're making this um, information available to other groups. The um, Department of Historic Resources the, uh, in Virginia, the SHBO, mm -hmm. other groups like that, that, let them know that this information is available, how they can access it. Um, so, you know, it's going to be fully public. Um, so anyone with the URL will be able to visit it, you know, once <clears> it goes live. Um, I don't exactly know how George Mason might plan to advertise that this is up, you know, mm -hmm, um, but, mm -hmm. you know, this is, uh, if there's any way that the History Commission uses to communicate that they have new projects out, you know, that might be a fun and exciting way. I'm certainly going to be telling everyone that I know that cares, you know, that, yeah. hey, I helped make this and it's really cool if you want to check it out. But um, beyond word of mouth, um, I don't know of any like formal plans for them okay. to let people know, um, the, but we'd be happy to work on those. The African American Museum might be very interested in the project as well, I would think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely look into that for sure. Great. Thank you. I, I, I know that, um, you know, Mary and, and Phyllis have <laughs> plans to, um, there's a press release, you know, we've been talking about doing a press release oh, cool. uh, coinciding with uh, in June. Um, mm -hmm. I believe. Mary, do you want to speak to that? Yes, I. Uh, we're hoping that it would be perfect if we could do it around Juneteenth, uh, but to uh, put out a press release and uh, I think it's a great idea to contact all other Virginia resources, Smithsonian, et cetera. Um, I don't know how to do all that, but we can look into it and see if somebody has the magic words for us, so. <laughs> Yeah, and when I say press release, you know, Jordan, this is this is through um, through the Fairfax County uh, Public Information Office. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, thank you. And and I can definitely contact individuals at Fenwick and see if they have any way that they could advertise it some way through their site or a newsletter, you know, that could circulate to students and faculty or something. So, you know, it can reach as many ears as possible, ears and eyes. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> There's been several newspapers that have mentioned our inventory when they were talking about the history marker project. So I've been keeping kind of record of that so we could reach out to them too and say, would you like to do a follow up article now about, you know, this database and see what they would like to do. So. Yeah, um, this really, really is exciting. Uh, opera. And you guys have done a great job and, you know, Thank you've you. overcome not only the um, you know the, the technical difficulties of pulling apart our, our templates that you know I, yes yeah. I sympathize I I was thinking the same thing as as Sammy yeah this well, is going to, to tell you the truth the the level of detail in those uh, makes our job easier uh, not okay. harder because it's full of great information and you know that gives us plenty to put in there and it makes the website look more alive so you know yeah they're definitely very uh, beefy sort of templates, um, but, you know, keep them coming because, you know, it, it just adds more to the website. It gives it more life, so. Excellent. And 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 you also had to deal with, you know, government bureaucracy. So yeah. welcome to that yeah. experience. <laughs> uh -huh. First taste of that, yeah. <laughs> um, and and you handled it really well and came up with, with a very, you know, a very great sort of solution in terms of using the Fenwick Library. That's, that's yeah. You know. yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's very exciting for honestly all parties involved. So yeah. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? I just want to oh. sing the praises of these young men because uh, dealing with uh, me, particularly who's not very tech savvy, uh, they've been very patient and uh, You're great, Mary. You know, <laughs> there's awesome. lots of guidelines and lots yeah. of ideas. Mm -hmm. So just want to say we appreciate it. We know you're not done yet, but. Mm -hmm. halfway through we're we're pleased so. we got you we can't wait to give you guys an update once we are all finished we have a nice beautiful site for you guys to show off to whoever you want so 
um, you know, we can't wait to keep working on it. Maybe we can meet in person at the end, say thank yeah. you. That yes. yeah. that would be great. Yeah. That would Make be wonderful. Some cookies you know? or something. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I do, yes, go ahead, Jordan. No, it's David Meyer. Um, oh, it's David. Sorry, didn't recognize. Yeah, I, I do think that at the appropriate time, in, in, in well, not only in person do we thank them, but <clears throat> perhaps we can communicate this formally, uh, both to the university's senior leadership, and uh, maybe on on behalf, maybe have draft a letter. Yep. We could send or uh, ask the chairman of the county board to send back to the university, just acknowledging this as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, we might be able to do some sort of board thing. Sure. sure. And maybe uh, the university could put something on their um, website. Uh, their, uh, yeah. Paul Liberty's uh, vice president for government affairs and that kind of thing in community relations. So. <clears throat> idea. Yeah. Okay, that's all. And, yeah, and I, I don't know if so. And welcome, David. I don't know if Sue has. Did she manage to get on, Denise? No, Cheryl. I'm sorry. I did. I sent you two emails letting you know that David had joined us and Sue had not. So okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't see uh, emails when I have the full screen up. I have to reduce mine. Um, so. Uh, I, I just wanted to acknowledge, uh, you know, that Sue had played a role in helping to facilitate the communications with with GMU. Um, so, uh, and, and yeah. thank her for for doing that. Um, all right. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you so much for your entire team. Yeah, sure. I, I know there's a whole bunch of folks that we're not seeing right now who are yeah. also participated and did uh, mm -hmm. contr contributed to this and. Uh, we really, really do appreciate it. It is very exciting. I think this is going to be just really awesome. Yeah, we um, fully agree. Um, thank you all for your time. Thanks for listening to us. Uh, thanks for the great project, you know, uh, and we can't wait to keep working on it and give you guys some wonderful updates in the future. So thank you again. We really appreciate right, it. Yeah, thank you. Indeed. Thank you. All right, moving on along on our agenda here. Um, I need a motion to accept the minutes and pay the clerk. I move we accept the minutes and pay the clerk. This is Esther, a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And I should have asked if there were any corrections, but OK, motion passes. And we can continue on. Um, and Sue is not with us, uh, but you do have, she did submit a treasurer's report. Um, it is in the share file. I also in, uh, appended it to our, or included it within that expanded agenda that I sent out. Um, just uh, for Elliot's um, notes, please note that um, there was a an amount that was omitted from the original document that Sue sent out. This is uh, it's under expenses uh, 216 2022 nameplates for commissioners. Um, that amount is seventy dollars and ninety two cents. Um, and so it seems that we have a balance of fifty six thousand five hundred ninety four dollars and eighty seven cents, and that the balance carryover for the commission for the conference. Is can I can I jump in here? Yeah, sure. For just a second. I'm not sure this is quite right, so I'm going to suggest we kind of maybe review this again next month because the expenses that are shown really are leftover expenses from 2021. They are not expenses for 2022. And okay. I don't know if that's a typo or if that was intentional or that's the best way for us to handle those. But uh, yeah, one is uh, I think the 2977 is actually postage so anyway let me um let me get with sue on that i have not seen this and by the way i wasn't able to even get into any of my today's emails until probably 20 minutes into the meeting tonight so i'm playing really late catch up here tonight okay yeah. i'm good now. Uh, all right Lynn, i i would say that the expenses may be of a different year it but what she's showing is when they're paid mm -hmm. that's what i wondered i just didn't want 
as budgets get prepared and everything to include monies that maybe we're not of this year. That's all. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, well, I think the carryover is a carryover and that is and that's that balance that she has there. But right. um, but I'm sure Sue can can address these next month. Um, and so we're going to continue on to staff reports because. Um, sorry, uh, Amy, are you here? Are you with us? <laughs> I am. I am also um, sadly dealing with. I'm so happy spring is here, but it does not treat me very nicely. So it's it's for the best that we not look at me today. <laughs> <laughs> Sad, red, drippy nose. <laughs> um, but um, it, it was a, you know, February is a short month, so we didn't have a whole lot to report, but I did want to mention <laughs> a couple of things. Um, one is that our own Barbara Naif is going to be um, spotlighted in a Fairfax County Park Authority Women's History Month um, blog that Liz oh, Kroll wonderful. wrote. Yeah, because um, great. her work with, with the um, historic preservation program at, at FCPA really started the whole thing. Um, I hear that her starting salary was $2.81 an hour. <laughs> when That's she started. Right. That's right. That's right. Yep. And um, I, I just have known, you know, in my time here that we just continue to build on on Barbara's legacy. So it's high time that we acknowledge her. And so be on the lookout for that. It will go out on the Park Authority social media and there will be a static blog post I can send out to the commissioners when it gets posted. All right. Thank Excellent. You. Totally surprised. And so I'm interrupting you to say thank you. Amy. Oh no, we are thrilled to do it. We are we are so thrilled to do it. Um, you know, the longer the longer I'm here, the longer I realize we really just do stand on the shoulders of of those who came before us, and um, I'm pleased to to be able to honor you in this way. So thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, the other um, news that didn't make the update: um, we are headed out to Summer Cemetery next week. It looks like we're finally going to get the weather we need to work on some of the historic iron fence railings out there. Um, it's a cemetery in Lincolnia. It's in a funny little place. Um, it's on Lincolnia Road and uh, Beauregard-ish. It, it's kind of tucked behind in a, in a place where the roads don't go where you think they will. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, a lovely little cemetery that the Park Authority um, took ownership of in, I think, 2006. Nope, 1998. Um, and we've been working diligently with Mary Lipsy and the Fairfax um, Cemetery Preservation folks, as well as the DAR and the SAR out there. Um, at the end of April, they'll be having a an unveiling because they've um, repaired one of the tombstones that is out there for um, Francis Summers. So there's John and Francis and it's it's been a really interesting opportunity to learn more about not just the Summers family, which we probably know more about than others because of the Revolutionary War aspects, um, but the other families that that lived and died in that little little corner of Lincolnia there. So we'll be working on the fences next week and just doing you know some tidying up and cleaning up, and um, it's part of that larger cemetery survey project that we'll be working on. You'll hear from me a little bit every month about it from now until forever, probably. <laughs> I'm happy to take your questions if you have any, but like I said, February was a pretty short month. All right, well, any thank questions? you all. All right, okay, thank you. Um, so we have, who is up from Heritage Conservation Branch this evening? That would be me, Stephanie Langton here. Can Hi, you... Stephanie, welcome. Hi. How are you? Um, hope all is well. Um, so for the Heritage Conservation Branch updates under operations and maintenance, um, <clears throat> a request for proposals for a historic structure report and treatment plan um, for the Park Authority's newly acquired Union Farm and Fairfax Arms was sent to our list of approved contractors. Um, proposals are due March 17th for those. Staff is also preparing a purchase order for a treatment plan for the Lamond House. Um, for Historic Sites Volunteer Corps, the next HSVC event 
is a landscape cleanup event uh, scheduled for Saturday, March 12th at Fairfax Arms. And for the resident curator program, um, exciting update, one application for the curatorship of Margaret White Gardens has advanced to the evaluation team review. Um, the eval team will hold a virtual public meeting via Zoom on Tuesday, March 29th at 7 p.m. And the meeting provides an opportunity for the applicant to present their proposal to the evaluation team in a public forum um, for questions and comments. And for more information on how to join that uh, meeting via computer or phone, uh, all the information will be on the Resident Curator Program's website. Um, additional virtual meetings of the evaluation team um, will be held. One was held this morning um, in preparation for the, the public hearing later this month. Um, another one is scheduled for Wednesday, April 6th at 10 a.m. and Wednesday, April 20th at 10 a.m. And while those meetings are open to the public, there's no opportunity for, for public comment at those. Those are more working staff meetings. But um, members of the public are asked to submit comments to um, Park Mail uh, by Wednesday, April 13th. And those are my updates. Are there any questions? Okay, thank Stephanie. you so much, Stephanie. Oh, yeah. here we go. Yeah, this is Subi. Just want to thank you again for your uh, very, very prompt and detailed response to the annual report. Thank you. Absolutely. Happy to help. All right. Okay. Um, Virginia Room, I know we, I heard Laura's voice um, earlier. Um, yep, yep. I'm here. Um, greetings, all. Uh, it was really impressive what um, Akbar and the team has put together for the African American History Initiative. Wow, um, you uh, found just the perfect uh, bunch of fellas to to put this together. Really savvy. I think it's going to be great. And of course, we'll put a link to it to our Black History page on the Virginia Room. So very exciting. Yeah. Um, uh, as someone said earlier, it was a short month, so Chris has been busy, um, uh, processed several new collections. The Homes Run Acres uh, Civic Association collection from 1951 to 2021. So that's uh, fascinating, the second half of the 20th century. And as you all know, it can be challenging to research the 20th century. So this is a great resource. Uh, the Inter-Service Club Council of Fairfax, uh, Virginia records from 1978 to 2007 have been donated to the Virginia Room. The Herbert O. Blunt collection from 1929 to 1946. Mr. Blunt was the Fairfax County news editor for the editor for the Alexandria Gazette. So it features articles um, by Mr. Blunt. And the Howdershell Hummer family collection, which spans 1904 to the 1940s, contains, um, contains correspondence, genealogies, photographs um, for this family collection. Uh, interesting uh, to go through sometime, and there the finding aid is online um, with other finding aids through the Virginia Room. Suzanne Lapierre and Chris Barbershack, I think, have presented at least their fifth presentation of the um, unequal access uh, libraries in Northern Virginia. So they've been reaching hundreds, and this is uh, really exciting. Um, I recently taught a class on military records to beginning genealogists. Um, personally, the biggest news is that uh, I came here in 2012 and April 22, I am retiring. It'll be my last day um, with the Virginia Room. Uh, and uh, we, uh, um, I'm thrilled because I hired Chris. He's going to be hired as the acting Virginia Room uh, librarian after I'm gone. And so that's um, a beautiful transition and hopefully we'll see him in the position. Uh, it's been um, a fascinating journey being with you all, and I really see, I see over the last decade, the group has come together as a cooperative, cohesive, really uh, productive group. I think you're in your golden age, so mm -hmm. it's very exciting to see all the things that you all are doing, and um, uh, thanks for letting me come along for the ride. So that, that's my, that's my so swan song. We're missing you already, Laura. We're missing oh, you. Yes. We're I don't jealous. think it's been 10 years, Laura. You <laughs> missed Almost, out. Yeah, yeah. You're and, not and, ready and, to go. 
Thank you. So many of you have been um, so supportive and encouraging, and uh, I just uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to that next adventure. For those of you who are retired, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. So. Yes. Well deserved. <laughs> Well, thank you, you so brought much. in you brought in some yeah. neat things, Laura, like the late nights, the late Friday nights. Yeah, that yeah. you you really you know uh, put your name on stuff. The oh, Virginia. Road. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, I I, I um I hope that uh, those can continue. That was a Friday night. We were open till eleven p.m. And I think the biggest fan was uh, Debbie Robeson. She would come in, sit down, a former commissioner. She she wouldn't even lift her head, you know, because she was focused. And for five hours, that woman would do research. So um, what more fun than to spend Friday night at the public library, huh? Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Would so, you uh, consent to an oral history interview? Oh, yeah, sure. About, I, yes. I don't, I don't, yeah, I mean, maybe this is what everyone says, but I really don't, uh, yeah, sure, Think I'd love to talk to you about it, Heather, That'd be yeah, great. you can talk about it, that's right, that's right. Just how things have changed, you know, over a decade, that's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Laura, what will you be doing? Uh, well, um, Brock, my partner, is younger than I am, so God bless him, he's going to continue to work and maintain me in the style that I wish <laughs> to be maintained. Uh, <laughs> nice. He has roots in this area, family, and um, uh, so we'll stay here. But I have a, I was joking with someone and said I had made a list of 40 things I wanted to do. And then I thought, oh, good heavens, Laura, that's silly. And actually, there are 43 things on my list. So <laughs> I have lots, uh, uh, my last personal comment, uh, the only thing I've, I've scheduled so far is in early May, I'm taking an all-day workshop on how to design and knit lace, and I can't oh, wait. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's, you know, I, I need a whole different change of mind and, and do that. So Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, and I'll I'll sign off and, and, so and you'll watch you. So you'll be tatting. You will Say that be again? Tatting. 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 Oh, I've done a little bit of tatting. That's fascinating. What? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, and I'm a, I'm a hand spinner. I have two spinning wheels. So yeah, I want to learn to sew. Oh, I've got, and I have a granddaughter. Does it get any better than that? I don't think so. <laughs> You'll be at Woodlawn then sometime this month. Their oh. needlework exhibit is all month. Oh, thank you. I'll look it up. I would love to see that. Every March. Oh, oh if you haven't good. seen it, it really is gorgeous. It's a wonderful needle, uh, needlework uh, exhibit. Yeah. Oh, superb. Yeah. I know uh, uh, Commissioner Garvey Hodge is, is the other needlewoman I'm uh, aware of uh, of the group. So, yeah, we've admired each other's work. Yeah, <laughs> well, you'll love Woodlawn. Woodlawn's okay, amazing. So I'll, 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 I'll sign out and I'll be here in silence. Thank well, you. Thank, thank you so much, Laura. Thank, thank you, you for Bye. your 10 years of, of wonderful service and, and help. And yes, you, you know, the, the Virginia room is far better for, for your, oh, your presence. Oh, thank um, you very much. All right, uh, we're going to continue on to where are we now? Um, sorry, I have to turn the page. No, Denise. Hi, everybody. Uh, what a loss. I can't imagine the Virginia room without Laura. <laughs> but I also understand that uh, that the that, that granddaughters have a pull and uh, and hobbies have a pull and it is when it's time it's time but we'll miss you um oh i'm sorry and i also wanted to mention that ann barnes has joined the meeting so i don't know if you want to do an audible with her um let's see i don't know sure say, so she needs to unmute herself and if you could just uh say hi to us and record so that we can be sure that you can be heard Ann Barnes. I see her. <clears throat> Do you want to circle back after my report? Yeah. OK, yeah. yeah. Just for any votes, um, she needs to be heard. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, there she is. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank okay. you so much, Ann. All right. So you just want... you. All right. Yeah. And, and so, Elliot, we have Ann and David did chime in later. So we have um, David here as well. And unfortunately, Sue has some problem with her phone not even being able to reach us so um, she's excused for technical reasons 
All right, thank you, Denise. You're welcome. Okay, um, Cheryl, I'm sorry, I don't have the agenda in front of us. When, at what point were we gonna discuss the team? Should we do that at the end so or? Let's do, so I actually have teams on the agenda as an unfinished business item. Okay. Um, so okay. so we I'll can do skip that over then. that. Yeah, sure. And then I, I, I threw in, and so that it is on the agenda uh, if you wanted to address you know, the funding for the architectural survey. Okay. That, yeah, that's my big thing. I've got two, okay. I've got three things, three updates from the, um, the written uh, report that I submitted already. One is that um, uh, Commissioner Nafe pointed out to me that uh, although um, the consultant had asked for help with specific districts, one in Herndon, that was um, misidentified. Um, I, we believe she was asking for um, assistance with Cartersville, which is which was mistakenly identified as being in Herndon. It is not the Enna, um, and I will correct that in my notes in my staff report. Thank you. This, sure, <laughs> uh, but stated on the record here. The second is um, I have an update on the Reston Architectural Survey. Um, the Reston Study Task Force interim recommendations are now available on the Reston Study webpage. To see the recommended edits and changes to the Reston Comprehensive Plan, navigate to the Reston Task Force interim recommendations tab. And then um, over the next few weeks, the Reston Study Task Force will be presenting their recommendations to various community groups throughout Reston. These meetings will be listed um, under upcoming meetings on the tab on the same web page, along with the task force presentation. And more extensive community engagement is planned for the summer um, before the county staff publishes its changes to the Reston um, Comprehensive Plan and then they go before the Planning Commission and the board in the fall. Um, and that this is specifically um, related to the History Commission because uh, you had supported um, DPD's Reston Architectural Survey, which uh, was done, but gosh, two years ago now, I think. Um, uh, and, and they, the Reston Task Force is incorporating the survey in the new language for the Reston Comprehensive Plan. So uh, thank you very much for your support for that survey. And, and it put heritage resources um, in the Comprehensive Plan in Reston where it really had not been. So thank you. Um, and that leads me into to the um, second update. VDHR's uh, CLG and cost share grant cycle began the beginning of February. Uh, for the 2022 and 2023 um, cycle. And with the loss of another important modern architectural resource, the Geller House in New York, which is uh, Marcel Brewer House, um, and the increased development pressures in Fairfax County um, that Fairfax County has continued to face, staff has been considering a countywide survey of modern architectural resources. Out of all the options to consider for survey, I believe the modern architectural survey rises to the top in priority and would be the easiest to scope to, to draft as to scope a draft to submit to DHR's grant proposal this cycle. Staff has been working with the Virginia Room, uh, Chris Barbacek, to identify potential resources to include in a countywide survey of modern architectural resources. We sent a preliminary scope to Bob Beach um, earlier this week for his review as the History Commission's representative architect and Barbara Nave for her input on rest and resources. We've also requested the support of the Virginia chapter of the AIA through ARB member John Burns to help write the historic context for these um, grant applications. There are approximately 21 districts and 238 individual resources preliminary, preliminarily identified. And based on last year's cost estimates and including every identified district and individual resource, the total for the survey as preliminarily scoped will be approximately $62,000, admittedly ambitious. The History Commission 
has in the past supported survey efforts with letters of support and funding. Last year's African American architectural survey, which is ongoing and we heard about earlier, um, was supported by the History Commission with a monetary contribution of $7,500. And I would um, ask that the History Commission consider supporting this architectural survey for the 2022-2023 grant submission uh, with the same request for $7,500. And that is my report, unless there are any questions for any other um, part of the report submitted previously. Sorry, my finger wasn't registering. Um, so does anybody have any questions for Denise? And does anybody want to um, make a motion with regard to her request for support for the survey. Um, I should mention, Denise, when is the deadline for the uh, grant request? Right, so that's the that's the trouble with all of the, with the timing of these grant requests that um, we got the application in like February 1st, didn't have time to do anything for the History Commission meeting prior to this March 1st, and then it's due on April 1st. So I can't come back in April you know, I can't present the information and then come back in April for a request. And I apologize. I wish the timing was different. And I may even ask PDHR to consider these, you know, the, you know, the, the commission schedules. Um, I'm sure we're not the only locality that has uh, monthly meetings for commissions, et cetera. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, I, my yeah. apologies that I'm having to make this uh, request without giving you proper notice. Yeah. Um, I was going to say I would um, I I would like to make a motion. And I also would like um, more information. I would love to know sort of you know what some of the identified um, um, modern architectural resources are. I think that would be really interesting. You're absolutely right about the pressures um, going on in Fairfax County right now. It's you know it's kind of alarming um, what what we're losing and how quickly things are moving on some of them. It's it's mind blowing. So um, I would like to um, to make a motion that we support this um, modern architectural resources activity with funds of seven thousand five hundred dollars and also um, follow that up with a letter of support as well. I'll second that. Yeah. A discussion. Anybody have any questions or comments? Go ahead, Barbara. Uh, one point is that this I don't know how many how many annual por annual report presentations we've done we did that this occurred but uh, Supervisor Penny Gross has been after us to deal with uh, 20th century architecture for for literally years and so I think that this is you know this is important I did mention um, thank you Denise Denise sent me the listing and there was only uh, I think there's one at this point uh, one resource in Reston. So I've asked her about Reston because we have some really um, amazing pieces that are being taken down as Reston is turning into whatever it's turning into. So um, I'm very much support this and hope that that perhaps the list can include, even though we've had the Reston survey, um, it was partial and that we can include some of those on on this list. And so I don't want to preempt you, Bob. I don't know what you think, but anyway, I'm fully in support of this. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Bob's muted. Hey, Bob, you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I can't read the mouse thing. Anyway, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm fully supportive of it um, be, and, and appreciate the other um, commissioners who, who do support it as well. I think it's very important uh, for the commission to take this up. Nice. Thank you. Denise, can you, uh, is there a, a time frame for, um, for what the constitutes modern architecture for this survey? Uh, so we, um, I, I, I have all of that information off the top of my head. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to venture. I know that we did um, think late seventies was about the cutoff, cutoff. point for, yeah. Um, it, we start really seeing um, postmodern really start to, you know, really dominate. Um, so that's, that's what, and I think the, um, gosh, I, I can't remember what the earliest resource is, but um, I would say like 
maybe late 20s, early 30s? When, when, Bob, when do you think it starts showing up in the United States? You're, you're about right on the time frame. And uh, a lot of the stuff that mid-century modern started in late mid to late 50s um, and, and, it, and went through mid-70s. As mid a dominant style, yeah. Yes. The, the international style was in there too, but mm -hmm. yes. Uh, Jordan. Uh, Jordan, you're muted. <laughs> it's my same problem. <laughs> uh, I certainly want to support this. Look, it, it is with the issue with the APA building. It was the issue with the uh, Association Drive. Yes. We are, um, and this, this commission has supported surveys before, and rightly so. And I think this is absolutely essential and I couldn't be more enthusiastic in my support of this. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. So I can share the scope with everybody. I think I'd like to take an opportunity, though, take the opportunity to um, as uh, to have other people weigh in. Um, and uh, as Barbara pointed out, we left out Reston because I said, well, we've done a selective survey of Reston. You know, maybe we don't. We already have over 200 resources identified. Um, a little concerned at how big it can grow if you because Reston it the, it just came up in that time period so we're um, just just a little concerning yeah to to add Reston but um, I'm happy to share the scope with the entire commission um, I'll probably put some time frames out on it uh, when I need things back by uh, because I do have to turn this around quickly. Um. Colombo, I just have one more question, right? <laughs> um, uh, you mentioned that the uh, the report might cost about sixty two thousand, sixty two thousand. I mean, yeah. And we're talking about seventy five hundred here. Um, where do you get the rest of your money? So I'm I'm going to go and ask the Architectural Review Board if they're uh, if they would support it. They supported the African American Survey last year um, as well. Um, and then I've sent the scope to management and um, in the cost share grant for uh, DHR is a 50 50 split. So we're really only looking for half of that 62. Mm -hmm. um, my my next follow on question would be for the commission. Is the money we're um, suggesting enough or should we do more? I guess it's enough. <laughs> why, don't we, yeah, why don't we see at this point um, what goes further? But um, we can always come back and revisit that, I think, Bob. I, I, I think I so. Without at least the schedule, being... can you? I'm sorry. Go, the go ahead. You... I was going to say, without at least uh, having produced a budget for us to look at, it's hard to know how much more we have to spare. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, hopefully we're working on that. Um, okay, any further discussion? Barbara, you have your, Barbara Nafe, you have your hand up. Is that just from before? I'm sorry, I didn't read, I didn't take it down. No, I'm, okay. I'm finished, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> except, right. except I did have Denise a, a question. The list puts Drainsville Road in Annandale. <laughs> I know you said that. I sh I think that's a typo. I think we've done something wrong there. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I was reading it with it's like, oh, is there another Drainsville I don't know about? So no, no, I have to go back and check that. But Barbara, but thank you for your close read. It's it's important. It's important. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we could we. Uh, anyway, so uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. Um, all those in favor for of supporting the Modern Architecture Survey um, grant uh, an amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars, say aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I, I will, um, I just, just a point of clarification. Um, 
I don't know whether we need a motion to uh, write a letter of support, but that was part of the original um, motion it and, and it right. wasn't repeated. <coughs> Thank you. Sorry. Um, no, no, that that is no that I should have said that as well. Um, I don't. Uh, <laughs> we can just revote. <laughs> I, I was going to say uh, all those in favor of uh, sending a letter of support along uh, you know, for this grant. Uh, let's have a proper motion. Proper motion. OK, I move um, that we send a letter of support for the modern architecture uh survey okay do I'll i have second. a second second thank you thank you barbara second for that <clears throat> and uh, uh any discussion hmm. hearing none i'll call the vote all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. Uh, any uh all the any opposition any abstentions Hearing none, motion passes, um, and I will I will be more careful about restating votes, or I will <laughs> refrain from restating votes. I'm sorry about that. All Thank right. you all very and much. The, really appreciate it. And the it. deadline for our um for our letter that we it, need to get. Uh, so, but both applications are due. Uh, so CLG and cost share, which I will be applying to both for the same um survey so it'll be the exact same application but to both uh grant and then they're both due april 1st so if i could have them sorry i'm gonna look real quick uh march april 1st if i could have them the 28th which is okay. a monday the first is a friday <clears throat> we can okay. work from our letter from last time <laughs> right. thank you all really appreciate it Yes, and, and Bob and, and Barbara, if you, know, if you want to uh, send any drafts, ideas with regard to that letter, and yes, we can look at what we sent last time and build on that. And then uh, yeah. um, I, I will send, I'll send an email out with the dates outlined for um, comments back for on the scope. I would want no later than the 18th, quite honestly, um, for comments back on the scope, but uh, that will be in an email. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and if there are, are there any, you know, Denise's report is included in that expanded agenda. I don't think that there was anything else, Denise, that you want to draw our attention to. I, I, um, I only mentioned the changes, but if anybody has any questions on any other portions of the staff report i'd be happy to answer questions okay all right okay continue along here thank you denise and denise is gonna come back to us in a, in a few minutes yeah um, but we're gonna move on to unfinished business starting with a fort belvoir update from tammy you're muted tammy Let's see. There we go. All right. Well, I actually have some slides to share with you. Great. Let's see. All right. Hopefully, you're going to be able to see this in a minute. Nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And you. All right. Well, I was going to say I could give you an hour long briefing on this topic, but I'm not going to. Um, so if you all will remember from our um, previous meeting, um, we talked at the February me meeting about um, creating a, uh, a separate report. Let's see if I can get my second slide going here. Um, hmm doesn't appear to be changing slides for me. There we go. All right, it's probably going to move forward. Um, so we talked about creating a separate report on Fort Belvoir's 1935 name change. Um, we wanted to ensure that the primary source evidence um, and other materials surrounding the, um, the hurdle narrative were available to the Board of Supervisors and also to the Naming Commission. Um, and our purpose was not to 
um, contradict or, uh, you know, or be um, confrontational about this additional report. We, we really want to supplement the information already collected or presented um, to the naming commission by the historian uh, Connor Williams. Um, and we talked about, um, I think Denise had suggested engaging using the Section 106 consulting party process as a guide, which um, in my mind means that uh, that we decide, you know, with a motion that we're going to create a uh, a report offline, and then we um, and and then we do that, uh, you know, uh, separate out, outside of you know the 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 committee of the whole, the, the commission of the whole. Um, so and you know, starting off with with the conclusion, it seems straight strange to start off with a conclusion, but I wanted to give you an idea of you know, where this was going um, is that, you know, the information, the evidence will show that Lewis Hurdle advocated for the 1935 name change um, to support historical recognition and tourism. You know, that was the rise of the age of the automobile in the 1930s um, for both Belvoir and Gunston Hall. And he was very concerned uh, with having the Mount Vernon Memorial Highway extended to Gunston Hall. Um, and he was not alone in wanting that to happen. There were other individuals and organizations um, that supported those goals. Um, and just to give you an idea, um, these are the individuals that we've confirmed are connected to the 1935 name change. So we have, you know, FDR, and he had a background in history. He had his um, BA in history from Harvard. Uh, he was very interested in the history of the area, visited Mount Vernon 13 times in his time in the presidency. Um, so he was he was very interested in it. He also has a quirky little tie to Belvoir in that his um, his parents honeymooned at Belvoir Castle um, in England. And um, and he had the painting of the Belvoir Castle behind his desk, which is kind of quirky and not necessarily related to the base, but it just kind of shows you know, that he was, he did have interest in, in history. Um, and so was, you know, was leaning that way anyway. Um, Harold Ickes, also pronounced Ickes, um, was a progressive politician from Chicago. Um, he was, uh, he was president of the NAACP in Chicago, which is fascinating. Um, but he was secretary of the interior. And we have, um, you know, we have primary source evidence of his involvement in this. Um, we had the Secretary of War, George Dern, and he's the one who signed off on the order to change the name. Uh, he was also a progressive politician from um, from Utah, and um, and he was appointed Secretary of War with no military experience, but he really focused on readiness. So um, so he's part of the story. Um, and then we have Lewis Hurdle, who purchased Gunston Hall in 1912, and so he was there really at the beginning. Of, um, of when Camp Belvoir was there, and he and his wife were very involved in the development um, of the post. Um, they did uh, fundraising drives for uh, savings bonds. They were working with the Red Cross at the hospital. They invited soldiers over to Gunston Hall for entertainment. So, um, so they were, you know, they were very involved there. And during this time also, they entertained all kinds of people at, at Gunston Hall, and they're a uh, visitor book is really remarkable, just showing all of the people there. A lot of Chicago connections, former presidents, artists, um, just a wide array of people, and many of them tied to um, tied to this decision making chain with um, with some of the development of the Parkway of the Mount Vernon M Memorial Parkway. Um, so they were all, you know, very closely tied in. Um, now, that's not to say they were the only people connected. Those are the ones that we can prove with primary source evidence. There's circumstantial evidence that maybe, you know, some other people were involved as well. And uh, R. Walton Moore is is one of those individuals, and he was the um, he was the 8th District Congressman, um, you know, early on. And he um, he was very involved in wanting the parkway not just to go from Belvoir and Gunston but all the way down to Wakefield, you know, George Washington's birthplace. So he was a big proponent of that. Um, he came out of retirement to be um, the assistant secretary of state to Cordell Hall. Um, he owned, it was very interesting. He was, um, he met Lewis Hurdle right off the bat and he uh, had the first mortgage on Gunston Hall for Lewis Hurdle. 
his family is very well known in Fairfax. His father was the first superintendent of Fairfax County Public Schools. His house is preserved. David Meyer knows just where his house is, diagonal from the courthouse. And so, you know, old, old Virginia family, Southern Democrat, however, not part of the bird machine. So he was definitely his own man and went against the grain there. Um, also, perhaps involved in the name change was Edward Schultz. He was a colonel. He was a um, he was head of the engineer school there at uh, Fort Belvoir, and he was involved in the archaeology um, of, you know, digging out the remains of the Fort Belvoir ruins. And he's one of the ones starting off very early, was interested in rebuilding the uh, Belvoir Manor and having that be the home for the commandant of, of Belvoir. So, uh, so he definitely is involved in the story. And then Congressman Howard Smith, you heard uh, Connor Williams talk in November in his briefing about Howard Smith. And, um, and he was part of the bird machine. He was the eighth district congressman after R. Walton Moore. They did not always get along with each other. <laughs> um, so, but he was, he was anti-civil rights. Um, and he was interested very much in build, rebuilding the Belvoir Manor, and he put in three times he put in a bill for funds to rebuild the manor. He was never successful with it, but he did. Um, he took advantage of, um, you know, right after FDR uh, changed the name of Belvoir, um, you know, he put in a bid right away to rebuild the manor. It was his. I think that was his second time that he'd put it in. So, um, so we don't have any direct evidence that he was involved in the name change. But you know, like the others on this list, he also, you know, there's circumstantial evidence to show that that he might have had an interest in there. We have organizations who were possibly connected: National Parks and Planning Commission, um, that was involved in uh, building the parkway in time for. George Washington's bicentennial of his birthday, um, Fine Arts Commission, and and many of these folks who are on these top two commissions, there were frequent visitors to um, to Gunston Hall, and um, and many of them are tied in other ways. Um, there's Frederick Delano, who was the head of the National Parks and Planning Commission, and he was of course FDR's uncle, and. Um, and he was also from Chicago, <laughs> so uh, so there's a you know theme running through here. Um, in the Fine Arts Commission, we had Ulysses S. Grant the third, who um, who was in charge of the bicentennial um, uh, celebration of George Washington's birthday, and he also was on site with Colonel Schultz at the um, the archaeological uncovering and was a big promoter of rebuilding the Belvoir Manor. We have the National Society of Colonial Dames of America. Lewis Hurdle donated Gunston Hall to the Commonwealth of Virginia um, in 1932 after his wife passed away. And he um, he designated the National Society of Colonial Dames to um, administer Gunston Hall, as they still do today, very, mu very much in the form of the way the Mount Vernon Ladies Association did um, gun does uh, Mount Vernon. So, and this is a map that kind of shows you the picture of, of what Lewis Hurdle was after. This is not a map that's associated with his letters, but this is just a map that I wanted to use to show, um, to show how this works, is that this is the, the Mount Vernon Memorial Parkway that runs down here and, and ends at Mount Vernon, but also there's a connecting road um, that takes it over to uh, uh, Woodlawn, right? So there's a different name and I can't remember how they're different, but one is this one is state owned, but this is the this is the parkway. Um, there was a lot of thought put into the fact that that this parkway could be connected to Belvoir and also to Gunston Hall. And so that's what Lewis Hurdle was after. He talked a lot about it and he um, he really stressed the importance of this to the colonial um, dames. Um, society. So he really wanted them to pursue this. And so part of that plan was having uh, Belvoir get its name back. So uh, so he was not uh, not very happy when the change was named, when the um, name was changed from Belvoir to Camp Humphreys. And so he fought for 17 years to get it changed back to Belvoir. Um, so he wanted he wanted the parkway to come straight down there. And the plans actually were more elaborate than that. Um, the plans actually called for the parkway to go to Gunston Hall and then down to Wakefield, which is way the heck down here. Um, and so there were a couple of ideas of how it would get there. There would be bridges associated with it. 
um, or it would go the long way around this way. But there were a lot of ideas that this was really going to happen even into the 1950s. So I have um, a lot of detail that I can show you with the letters that went back and forth with these folks, um, and I can move on with that. But um, but if you all want to stop there, you know we can we can stop there and just talk about this letter being written offline, or I can move forward and show you you know some of these letters you know where Hurdle talks about um, you know talks about how upset he is with the name. This is the document that shows where, you know, down here he says, nothing is of greater importance than to give the public the opportunity of coming to Gunston on the beautiful boulevard already built to Mount Vernon, reaching down toward Belvoir. You can see he's scratched out and then on to Wakefield here. So maybe he realized that that was kind of a, a pipe dream. Um, so this, these are the um, diaries. This is uh, Hurdle's diary on the left, which shows that... Uh, President and Mrs. Roosevelt visited on the 29th of uh, April, 1934. They used these diaries in a very interesting way that, where they just went back every year and updated what happened on that date. So this is when uh, the Roosevelts visited uh, Gunston Hall. And this is what Hurdle says. His last word in waving goodbye was that he would change Fort Humphreys to Fort Belvoir. And this is uh, FDR's diary where he... He doesn't say the thing about Belvoir, but he says that he visited Gunston. Um, so Hurdle really felt that he had an agreement from Roosevelt to change to change the name at that point in April uh, 34. So and then this is the um, visits of uh, Harold um, Ickes and his wife. Anna Wilmarth Ickes was, um, as I mentioned, they were progressive politicians and she um, she was actually a um, uh, in the state legislature, uh, served three terms in the state legislature while, you know, while he was having his political career too. Um, so anyway, they visited in um, June of 34 and then uh, Anna, Anna visited in June of 34 and then brought back her husband, Harold Ickes, um, the Secretary of the Interior on December 16th, 34, right? So, so he went back. We know that, uh, that Hurdle talked to him as well. Um, the announcement comes out on February 10th, so just a couple months after Ickes' visit. And as it says in this article, um, that Roosevelt asked Secretary of War Dern to have the name of Fort Humphreys changed to Fort Belvoir in memory of the early plantation of that name. So um, the War Department um, decided to do that, uh, to make that change. And they gave what is now Fort McNair the name of Fort Humphreys. So, and this is the letter that Hurdle wrote to FDR that day that the news came out on February 10th to say thank you. Um, that isn't it great? The gracious act. Thank you for your gracious act in restoring the Fairfax properties, the original colonial name of Belvoir. So he goes on to thank him. Um, FDR replies right away and he says it took some time to do it, but at last Belvoir had its rightful name restored. I hope it all is going well with you. Um, Ickes was also on the job. His his letters are a little bit later. Um, he says I'm working on the suggestion you made um, of changing the name of Fort Humphreys to Belvoir. I've talked the matter over with the president who's sympathetic and I'm in hopes that we'll be able to work the matter out. And then he confirms the next week, yes, it really happened. Um, and then also, not to be left out, <laughs> Colonel Schultz, who had been the um, the head of the engineering school at Belvoir, um, he had written to, uh, to George Dern on February 16th. He was excited about the name change. We don't have that letter, but we have the letter that George Dern wrote him back. And he says, you know, I gather that you approve of the action in changing the name. Um, I anticipated your reaction. So perhaps, you know, Schultz had been lobbying from a different angle. Um, he says, I'm afraid the engineer corps as a whole did not take so kindly to the idea. So they were uh, in favor, probably the engineer corps uh, really liked the name of Humphreys because he was an engineer representing their discipline. Um, he says down here at the bottom, we are trying to get money from the PWA 
with which to build a new Belvoir Manor. So that is the um, Public Works, Public Works, so I can't remember what the Public Works Authority. What is it again? It's often administration, but maybe authority. administration, public works administration. I think so. With which to, so he's trying to get money to do that. And guess who's in charge of the public works administration? Harold Ickes. So, so these folks are all working together. So, um, so we'd like to make it a replica of the original house. So, so there are a lot of people who are interested in doing this. Um, and even into 1980, uh, Colonel Schultz had, uh, had sent a letter to um, to Lewis Pick, who is the major general chief of engineers, pressing to get the you know Belvoir Mansion rebuilt. Um, and it's very interesting his response down there. And I think this was kind of a position of the you know War Department all along. And he says here, for practical reasons. It appears undesirable to press for restoration of the mansion because we fear that such an action would result in the extension of the Mount Vernon Memorial Parkway through Fort Belvoir and in tourist traffic that would severely interfere with the operation of Fort Belvoir. So that was the reason against it and probably the reason why the parkway was never extended. Um, so anyway, going back to uh, to that idea, um, I think that we, you know, can go ahead and produce a report that has this material in it. I just showed you the tip of the iceberg there. There's so much more that supports that idea that um, that the reasoning that uh, that Lewis Hurdle had for wanting the name of Belch Belvoir changed back um, was to promote this historical recognition of these two properties and to take advantage of the automobile tourism that was happening and get the Mount Vernon Memorial Highway extended. So, um, and as I mentioned before, there are others that supported those goals. So, um, I don't know if you guys uh, have any questions about that or um, or if you uh, if you would like to make a motion that we do a report. Um, so, the floor is open if you have anything. Uh, I see. Uh, I think it looks like Barbara, is that Barbara Nafe? Hand up. Yeah. Thank Barbara, you, you want to go ahead? Or Barbara, you're muted. Muted by somebody there. Okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm, Tammy, that's just incredible, really. So thank you. Um, whatever we need to do and wherever we can send it so that all of this genuine research can get to these people. Um, I'm for it. I'm not sure who we send it to. Do we? Are we sending it to our own BOS? That's that is kind of what we talked about last time. Is that um, that we would be sending this to the board of supervisors for their information, okay. um, and then we could because we've been asked to be a um, uh, stakeholder. We were at the stakeholders meeting for the naming commission. That that it would be fine also to send it to them, you know, a copy to them. But really, our, our main audience is the Board of Supervisors, so they're aware of this. We have kind of a vacuum of the history of the name change because the process that the Naming Commission is doing is behind closed doors. So I think right. it would be helpful if the Board of Supervisors had awareness of how this happened. All right, then I move, then I'm going to move that the report just presented by Tammy and all, all its details be submitted on behalf of the History Commission to the Board of Supervisors and to the Naming Commission. Naming commission. Naming That's what commission. they call themselves, the Naming Commission. Yeah. All right. Second. Second. Amazing. By the way, by the way, there's only one Ickes that came from Germany and he settled in Pennsylvania and I'm one of them. So there you go. Wow. And we, oh. our family, and our family, we said Ickes rather than Icky. So there you well, go. and he, the senior Harold Ickes senior was um, said Ickes, and then um, the one that worked for the Clinton administration said Ickes. So, <laughs> anyway, um, wonderful. Can I make a comment? Yes. Well, we're in discussion now because the motion was made and seconded. So now we have discussion. Discussion. Okay. Um, that was really interesting. And being on that same committee as you um, with the partnership, are you sending that to Peggy Taj? Taji, is that the person? Well, we could, when the report is done, we, you know, we could um, send that to them as well. I mean, that is, 
we can, I, we can see, that, see multiple folks. Because she did, she reached out to me asking me some questions uh, about the history of Fort Belvoir. And so I think that this, you know, what they, as you know, they have people from time to time come and give presentations. We only had that one that was done on the, on the Fairfax family. Mm -hmm. But this one, I think, really gets to some of the nuts and bolts. Yeah. And I, I, and really I didn't show you the half. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. I definitely get it together. And I'd be happy to work with you on it if you want. Oh, that'd so, be great. Yeah, that would be great. Cheryl has already um, contributed a lot to, um, to that. And I have timelines. Like, I started, I was working on this today. And, like, this literally was turning into, like, an hour-long <laughs> briefing with the timelines and everything. And it's fascinating. I mean, it really is interesting. Um, but, you know, we, we have to focus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tammy. Good job. Tammy, yes. thank you. Yeah. Um, it's great, great work, and um, I almost feel like you were there, but I know you're far too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a fascinating period to learn about just what was going on at the time and how involved these people are with each other, and um, and you know they were people of their time. So when I say progressive politicians, not like today's progressive politicians, but for the time, I mean really supporting. Um, you know, women in government and all of that. It was, um, and supporting African Americans in government. Uh, it was remarkable. Lynn, did you have something you wanted to say as well? Just a, just a quick question to Tammy, and and but first accolades. I mean, this was an amazing undertaking, and and your enthusiasm is contagious. So thank you for that, Tammy. Um, <laughs> in in a perfect world, kind of, since you're so immersed in this right now, how how would you like to see this play out? What what's what are some of your thoughts here? Oh, I have good ideas. Um, so, so <laughs> yeah. and, this is, and this is what I told the the naming commission when when um, Cheryl and Ann and I were there in September, is that um, is this story here because we know what Lewis Hurdle's motives are because they're documented, and then we have these circumstantial folks. We have a lot of folks, as Cheryl likes to say, this the name change was overdetermined. There were so many people who were working at this from different angles. Um, that to say, you know, this single point is why the decision was made is extremely difficult. And so that is a problem for the naming commission to to really think about is that what is their threshold? You know, if it was a possibility that it might have been named to honor the lost cause, is that enough to spend this amount of money on changing a base name? Um, so so I don't know what their threshold is, but you know, I have strong feelings for just understanding some of the other history of Belvoir. And I think um, if your purpose in changing the name of a base is to um, think carefully about how we're more fully talking about our history, right. um, I would say that the name Belvoir is not causing a lot of problems and is not um, closely associated for people with right. um, with the idea of slavery and um, and discrimination. Uh, what we do have going on at Belvoir is we have some very important African African American sites that have been ignored. And I think if you're going to spend millions of dollars, um, I think that it would have a greater effect to uh, interpret the African American sites mm -hmm. that are there on Belvoir mm -hmm. and really dig in and do the research and have markers and tell those stories. I think that would have a much bigger impact on um on better more fully telling the story of american history um than changing that going back and changing the name of belvoir and actually changing the name of belvoir might do damage because it might cause people to forget that they were enslaved people at belvoir um so those so those are the ideas that i put out in front of the naming commission before is hey you know renaming is not the only tool in our toolbox sure. for for what we want to do here Sure. And I love the African-American component. Of oh, it. it's this. I mean, there was a 75 year, you know, antebellum free black community that has no markers, um, no indication that it was even there. And I think, you know, forget renaming. <laughs> Let's tell that story. Right. 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 So. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Okay, we do have a motion on the floor. I'm, I'm not going to repeat it unless somebody really wants to, <laughs> to attempt to restate it. 
I, I um, would like to hear the motion repeated. Okay. Um, if the secretary is taking it down, maybe that would help. Elliot, do you have that down? Uh, I do. Um, Thank you. So Barbara Neef made the following motion. Uh, that she moved that the um, report be presented by Tammy Marinino. Or Mar 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 Marino. Uh, on behalf of the History Commission and the report uh, submitted to the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. And, and, and the renaming committee. Renaming committee. Excuse me, and the renaming, and the renaming commission. Committee. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mary, so that motion. Seconds. So no, that motion actually has been seconded. And oh, I'm sorry, so I missed it. That's okay. Yeah. I'm, we're I calling the vote <laughs> at this point. So that is that is the motion on the floor. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any, any uh, uh, opposed? Any opposed? Any abstain? Uh, abstentions? Okay, motion passes. All right, so we you know, we will wrap that report up and, and you. send it out. Yes, and anyone what, who would like to um, to participate in that report, either writing or reviewing, um, you know, before it is finalized, uh, you know, just please reach out with an email and um, and we will do that. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I, we, we've discussed this in, in the past, but just to reiterate that, you know, the the issue is that or one of the concerns is that this history isn't well known. There's another, you know, narrative that has its its value and its, you know, its truth. Um, but that is that's the only version of this narrative that's out there. And this, you know, by sharing this, we get a more complete picture of what happened. Correct. Correct. This narrative does and that's not the intent. Preclude, right. It doesn't preclude um, the truth of another narrative. Um, well done. Uh, well done, Tammy. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Moving Thanks. along. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Tammy, for I mean, you, you have done an amazing amount of research. It's just <laughs> stunned at what you can find. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to the far less interesting <laughs> and much more pedestrian uh, topic of an independent Teams account for the uh, for the History Commission. Um, so we, we've mentioned this before, uh, and I appreciate all of the uh, committee chair people who have stepped up and said they'd be willing to be trained for this. Um, and unfortunately, uh, uh, DPD has decided not to extend us the free trial of a year uh, at the business basic level that they initially had sort of offered. And so um, the question is, is whether or not we want to you know, this would have eventually been part of our um, our budget anyway. Uh, do we want to go ahead and subscribe uh, and thus be able to run our own committee meetings? Um, and if we do, you know, which which level do we want? Um, and so, just you know, I'm I'm not entirely sure that we have to make this decision tonight, Denise. Um, you know, Denise can help fill in on on some of that. Uh, but, you know, I do want to, you know, sort of inform you where we're, what our status is with regard to this uh, issue. Um, Ladies, what is the difference between basic and standard? Uh, so the standard, the 700, the, the one that will cost 750, right. uh, it's 100 and I forget what it is, it's 1250 a month. Um, that has, so I actually have a, um, a form that I sent out. Let me see if I can actually share my. Um, let's see if I can bring this up. Can you see that? No. Because let's see why? Why not? I wouldn't buy that. <laughs> you know yes, there it is. You know what I mean, Vern? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you guys should be able to see it, yes? Yes. OK, okay. so um, so this shows the, the four different levels that the one, the 1250 a month, 150 
dollars per year per user, it may basically it has a um, it allows you to create breakout rooms. Well, that's also true for the uh, basic. It allows you to hopes, host webinars that include attendee registration pages, email confirmations and reporting. Um, it also has a terabyte of user storage, which you also get with basic. Mm -hmm. um, and then it allows you access to a different suite of software. Um, so you get access to publisher, for example, and their desktop versions rather than the shortened uh, web versions. Um, and so that's the difference between the the um, the higher cost you know, business standard and the business basic, which is um, initially what uh, I believe that it was what uh, DPD was considering. I will note that um, for that we do have you do have to have a specific email address associated with it um, that has this. We'd have to uh, set up our own domain using that on Microsoft uh, um, URL. Uh, with the essentials, you would just use your personal email. Um, so is what we've been using the uh, basic? Is that so? What the county uses, Denise? Is that basic? So the county has the whole suite of Microsoft. It's a whole suite of Microsoft products. Um, so I, oh. I wouldn't. It's probably not basic. It's probably the highest tier because I can do breakout rooms. Um, I have the file capacity, the file storage capacity for like when we record meetings, there's a place that I can retrieve the, me the meeting recordings from and they're large, the, these recordings are. So I would imagine that, you know, we're at the, the upper end of the tier uh, rather than the lower end. Well, there's so much that's similar between basic and the most expensive one. It seems to me basic for isn't that like the five dollars a month? Is that I, I, uh, basic is five dollars a month, and yeah. um, and um, sorry, um, and the essentials is four dollars a month. Well, there we go. Is that I, I couldn't find the stop share per user? So it's it's four dollars or five dollars a month per user. Yes. So that's why so, I had. Um, go ahead, uh, sir. So committee is a user, a committee chair. Mm -hmm. is yeah. Right? So yeah. So we we're talking about five committee chairs. Um, so for five users, essentials would be two hundred and forty dollars for the year. Basic would be three hundred, and the standard would be seven hundred and fifty. So would the chairs then share? Um, We'd have to divide the chair meetings into five groups. No, so for no, instance, it, I would share with another committee. So there, there are there are five committees that meet or would maybe meeting in the future regularly enough. And then what one we we also have um, multi committees that have the so like Lynn you know, has two committees. Mary actually works with like three different committees right now. Um, and so, or two, yeah, three. Um, so, so there's that sharing, that form of sharing, but you wouldn't share an email with Mary um, and you wouldn't share an account with Mary. We could, you, you, we don't want to do too much of that. We can do a little bit, but, um, uh, you know, you want to be able to sort of control your own meeting without having to conflict, you know. But Cheryl, the subscription then would be though the Fairfax County History Commission subscription and then the committee chairs use it. Do I understand that correctly? So so the no? the the sub the, the the commission would have a subscription and we specify with as part of that sus subscription how many users I see. Um, are yeah. on it. So so if we have, you know, and it's, a, as I said, it's associated with an email. Um, and so we would have, uh, you know, five users is sort of 
what we're thinking would probably work. Um, and it may be something that we'd have to, we could change, but uh, for the moment, five is kind of uh, my, my target. Um, so how did you arrive at the five? So that is, um, uh, it's on the, do I have a copy of, a hard copy of my saying? I want to, I want to go into. It was an attachment, it was an attachment from you. Yeah, and, and I, um, let me see if I can pull it up just on my screen, um, because I did specify yeah. who. So it's for Mary, Lynn, Elise, Anne, and Gretchen. Anticipating that Gretchen will start having um, meetings as we go along, as we proceed through the year. So, where is my committee? Did I miss you? Yeah. Oops. Esther. Totally. <laughs> Esther should be on there. So, Esther, you should be on there. Are we missing anybody else? Anne? Anne's on Anne, here. Anne should be Anne's there. Here. Anne's on here. Yep. Talking about Anne Barnes or Anne Stunts? Anne Stunts. Because, I mean, Anne Barnes is a committee chair. Anne, hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but the bylaws committee doesn't meet that often. And there, I thought we could get away with sharing. Um, like, Anne, for example, is a member of the. So, if you have a. One of the things that we thought of is that if you have a regular, uh, reliable sort of committee member, that they could, who is also a committee chair, um, that they could then, you know, issue. A, you know, basically, what you do with this is issue the meeting invitation, and then you are the person who has to host. You have to be there to open up the meeting. Um, oh, just like Zoom, just like Zoom. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this would be so, six times. So yeah, then all my numbers are off. I'm sorry about that. It's 150 per per user per year. Yeah. I, I don't know that we need the the high end one. I think the 60 per year is enough. Um, well, because we don't really. Lynn, when you yeah. do your history conference brochure, your flyer, oh, right, right, publisher would help you with that. That's oh. what I have at home. Right. Publisher right. is the Microsoft graphics program. Okay. Okay. Oh, that and so there I see. All right. So in in that way, you're thinking 150, the the 150 per year. Yes, I would year suggest we go with the top of the line. Okay. Uh, just a quick question. So the emails are personal emails or county emails? So that depends on uh, what your uh, level is. So for the free accounts and for essentials, you use your own personal email. Mm -hmm. For basic and standard, they require, and I'm not quite sure why, but they require that you have a domain name. And uh, they pro Microsoft will provide free domain names, um, which has got that funny sort of um, on Microsoft uh, name. Uh, actually, I saw it on uh, for the Board of Supervisors collective uh, email address is they use it. They use, you know, um, and so everybody would have their, you know, not everybody, but all, you know, the each you, each account would have an email that said, you know, uh, you know, Lynn at Fairfax, you know, at, at FCHC dot on Microsoft dot whatever the rest of it is, come, you yeah. know. Uh, uh -huh. just, just to be a contrarian here, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not a potential user, but for all these discussions that we've been having in the past two months or three months on this topic, what's the benefit? I mean, we are still <laughs> mulling over all the intricacies of this. Uh, I think and the biggest benefit is we don't have to deal with WebEx, but we need to get more of a drill down on this. We are not using WebEx. We are we're using. No, no, we have to make a choice to do something different. And this is what this choice is. Oh, so, no, right. no, actually, that's not true. Because that choice has already been made. We're using Teams right now. E yeah. And, and okay, Denise, so we're done. Right. I didn't know that. I thought our time was up. 
in terms of I mean, our free trial. Uh, That's what I'm I am looking for the cost benefit. I mean, the cost not just being mo monetization, mm -hmm. also the time you're spending discussing it and trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's um, it is for uh, I'm I'm going to chime in here uh, just to answer Subi's question. It is for relief staff relief. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, because but staff, staff but the staff attend anyway. You attend these meetings no, anyway. No, no. Well, so, stop. So right. So um, I I staff would continue to attend the history commission meetings. Mm -hmm. Staff would no longer be required to attend Could the be. committee meetings. Mm -hmm. And last week oh, staff attended okay. three committee meetings. Got it. Yeah. Right. Um, right. So that it's it's staff relief. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a good that's a and, good and in there. I'm going to let Barbara talk and then I'm going to follow up with that as well. Sorry, go ahead, Barbara. Well, I was I had my hand up before Denise spoke because yeah, that's, that's the point. Um, you know, the Den we have we have no staff. We have Denise. It's liaison and she is at this point serving ARB plus us. And we if you think of all the committee meetings that we have. And so the purpose is to is to relieve the paid staff somehow okay. because we can certainly for the committees themselves oftentimes they are just there to start the meeting and record it and end it and we don't have to record the meetings anymore so it's a it's a very viable reason and that's why i'm all in favor of whichever one we choose so okay enough and and going forward um we will be required and i see carol and, and mary i saw you lean forward um uh going forward we will we will have to stop meeting wholly electronically right. <laughs> and we will have to start move, meeting um, in person. The accounts will enable us to have at least some participation at an electronic level so that, you know, if you know, as long as we have a physical quorum present, you could then also have a meeting, an electronic meeting invite for those yeah. people who were unable or you know had health concerns or other reasons for not attending per our electronic policy. So, um, so what is the motion? So it seems like we have we it's the majority is in favor. So what are we debating here? Okay, um, I think there's still data gathering. I don't think there's a motion yet. Oh, there's yeah, there isn't a motion on the floor. I I didn't necessarily want to start with a motion because yeah. I wasn't sure exactly. where we're at with this. Um, and also because this was an unexpected turn of events, that's why we're talking about it again, Subi. Right. Because we had it. We had actually we resolved this. Mm -hmm. It was done. <laughs> right. I, I, I have to say it was done. Right. I mean, for sixty dollars a year, for heaven's sake, do we need to spend six hours? <laughs> but it's not sixty dollars a year. It's, it's not. It's, it's, it's two eighty-eight if it's uh, or or three. Uh, 360 well, or something depending. Cheryl, help me understand them with the math. If there were six committee chairs and we did the highest end version of this, does that come, does that then 153 no, I, over to $900 a year? Do I understand that correctly? Yeah, it, and I think, I think, you know, it, what, yeah, 36, yeah, that would be 900 a year. You're correct. Mm -hmm. okay. um, let me uh, go to, uh, Carol and uh, Mary, or Mary's shaking her head. No, no. Well, okay, Carol. I'm, I'm short because you answered my question. Same with oh. Mary. You answered, you, my, you question. answered my question because um, I was concerned we're going back uh, in everybody, meet and people. So you answered that. So thank you. Uh, yeah, it is quite possible. Uh, we, the county is no longer requiring masks. We are now officially, as per the new CDC standards, and uh, we are now a low transmission uh, area by by the new CDC standards. The, and so um, the county is no longer requiring masks within county facilities. And, um, and so I don't know how much longer our local state of emergency will last. And that is how we are able to meet wholly electronically. Um, so again, this is this is just a you know a capacity that you know we could have without having to have staff present um, and to meet you know to meet our committee meetings. Lynn, go ahead. Well, my last thought is if we are that 
close to transitioning to in person. It seems to me that this is going to be I'm, I'm, clar I'm clarifying confirming here. This is going to be a temporary. Venue for us until the mandate is said is stated that no, we get to go back or is this always going to be a backup opportunity? Did this is always going to be a backup opportunity okay. because we have an electronic participation policy. So, okay, so, now. so okay. commissioners can participate this way. Okay. They can also call in, you know, with a conference call. Um, but, you know, you know, going forward, and it, it may very well be, you know, Denise was anticipating that perhaps the county will eventually um, have a virtual participation for the public, you know. Mm -hmm as well, um, well and that and the, the teams would facilitate that as well so well, the I've, high the high end as chair of the history conference would allow look at all the things yeah. that this would allow it would allow a webinar attendee registration pages email confirmations and reporting that's huge you talk about uh freeing up county time that's um that that's pretty significant that's yeah and it, it is possible, and it was a while ago that I made the inquiry. Um, it is possible that we could actually mix and match these levels and have one account at that high level end and the others at a um, at the basic, the next yeah. level. Good. Um, a hybrid uh, sorry, probably in the future. Sorry, uh, but go ahead, Bob, and then Subi, and then Esther. I, I was just making the comment that a hybrid platform is probably always going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my question was in terms of uh, uh, number of participants. So, for example, if Lynn uh, uses this for her conference, the hybrid conference or whatever, full full uh, uh, online, how many people can join in at one time? So for a webinar, I know for the um, for meetings at the lower level, it's 300 people. Wow. And uh, that would let's see. Unique, Lynn? Oh, if, if we got 300, I'd be so jazzed. <laughs> 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 I'd be thrilled. Be, so uh, that, that yeah, uh, you know, Essentials allows meetings of up to 300 participants per meeting. Nice. Um, and then you know, basic has this probably has the same. I don't see that they up it. Um, and I would assume that that would also be true at the standard level, if not, you know, it, it potentially higher. Well, I think the 30 hour limit for a meeting is phenomenal, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what I was a hoping you weren't going to notice that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't get I any ideas. <laughs> I just I couldn't help but go there. OK, a commission is um, on. So, yeah, I don't know if you all want to just look at that sheet a little bit more, think about your needs, um, you know, and we can talk about it later or if you are anxious to just move along and and make you know, if somebody feels like, yeah, they're ready to make a motion and take a vote. We can do that also. Well, um, I had my hand up for. A oh, I'm sorry, Esther. Go ahead. Yes, please. Oh. Uh, I would suggest not putting a person's name on whatever the email is. Put the committee or mm -hmm. one of the committees rather than it being my name or John's name. Yes. Um, so yeah, and that would be that would that would be the basic or or higher level. Okay. I, I think it makes sense to for us to chew on it and discuss it in final yeah. form next month. I yeah, agree. and and we could also you know perhaps have some budget information with us uh, about yeah. that too, um, and that might that get us a, a get a sense a better sense of you know how how many bells and whistles to go for. Yes, sorry, Subi. We need <laughs> I know, to carry I know. this over because we don't have our budget thing. I, I, I I put it on the agenda thinking that we needed to have an answer, but actually I don't know that we do, do we, Denise? There's no real, I mean, I know your staff would appreciate sooner rather than later. Right, exactly. It's just the, the staffing. But I, um, I think 
yes, there there's nothing forcing you to make a decision tonight. Sooner mm. would be better than later. Yes. But we can, <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll resolve it uh, in April. As yeah. That, yeah. I think we, um, I, I can make a commitment to that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that'll just give us a little bit more time and it'll make me uh, give me give me an opportunity to make sure I get the right number of people. I apologize, Esther. I might have worked out some way where you had somebody else supporting you on that, but um, like myself, but I actually dropped having an account for myself because I thought, well, I'm not really a committee chair, so why should I? Um, all well, right, you can let's always use mine. <laughs> Thank you, <Yeah>. Esther. <laughs> Um, all right, we're going to continue on with new business. This does have to uh, be uh, sort of proceed, proceeded with in terms of action to this evening. Um, this is with regard to a staff request. Um, so the History Commission has been asked to be involved in a great number of projects of late. And I have heard from any number of you that, you know, we are doing a lot too much. Um, and we have actually had to uh, turn down requests from the Board of Supervisors uh, and, and reduce and lower expectations um, with regard to, you know, things that they have been, that we are doing for them. Um, and, you know, uh, even before some of these projects like the Confederate Names um, Inventory, I, I have heard, you know, discussions about how we need more staff support. And certainly I know that we, um, we overextend uh, uh, Denise. Denise, quite a bit. Um, so, uh, so this is basically um, Anne and I in advocate, not Anne, just I, but advocacy, you know, we have been discussing the idea of having uh, staff and putting that in more concrete terms and not just talking about it. Um, and so uh, we we have had conversations with Denise. Denise has had conversations with her management uh, folks at, at DPD. And um, and so now we have a kind of path uh, towards making an actual request for staffing through the Department of Planning and Development. So this is not a, a, a budget item for us. It is just, uh, you know, we, we don't generally sort of do things here unilaterally. So I'm just looking to see whether or not there is support within the commission to um, to put forward a uh, a request to submit a request for staff to the Department of uh, Planning and Development, and what we're specifically what we've kind of fleshed out as a a, a reasonable request is to have at least uh, fifty percent of a planner two position within the Department of Planning and Development assigned to us. Um, Anne was going to you know present this, but she. She is is um, celebrating her husband's birthday, who has who has uh, um, been you know, a long delay denied uh, celebration that they've been looking forward to. So that's where she is this evening. So I agreed to um, to suggest to put this on the agenda and to present it to you. Um, and just for the sake of brevity and to get the uh, discussion going, I'm going to. Um, hand the gavel over to Lynn for a moment, uh, actually for a little while, and so that I can be heard to make a motion. Um, so um, I move that the History Commission requests that instead of a liaison, that the commission be assigned at least 50% of a planner two position within the Department of uh, Planning and Development. I second. So, yeah. Can, can we have some discussions? I, I'd like to know. Yes, definitely. What, that was just to establish uh, an yeah. opportunity for discussion. Thank you. I'd like to know what the statement of work would be for that 50% person. So I sent out this evening with the agenda a draft. Um, Sorry. That's OK. Yeah. No, uh, I, I appreciate. You know, I, I would have sent it out earlier, except that I was writing it all like the night before. It's um, very detailed. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, so um, this the scope of work includes continuing as a liaison 
which is to facilitate communications, support on relevant um, actions to the commission, uh, relevant you know, report for Department of Planning to uh, the commission, uh, facilitate meetings, uh, post public meeting notices. There's a lot of FOIA stuff that, that Denise does that we don't see. Um, that's That would continue. And then to add to that administrative support, um, so assist with commission correspondence, budget reconciliation, the annual reports. And please note the word, the, the operative word here is assist. You know, I'm not suggesting that this person take these jobs over necessarily, but that they assist us with, with producing these items. Um, and then also program support. Um, and this is a little, um, you know, this is a draft I am, and, and I'm not asking for the approval of this draft. I'm asking for the approval of the idea that we make this request. And then if you have um, suggestions that you want to make with regard to the draft of this uh, request, please feel, you know, feel free to, to uh, submit those to me. We do have to get this document. If, if we agree to do this this evening, it does have to get to, um, to DPD fairly quickly because we are in the middle of, of our budget process right now. Um, so in terms of program support, uh, one of the key things I think that this person would be involved in would be uh, research and, uh, um, and work on nominations uh, for inventory. We're talking about doing all of these surveys, all of these new, his, new historical buildings <laughs> that we're going to be identifying that should become part of our inventory. Um, and that's a huge amount of work uh, you know, to get that done. Um, other possibilities would be to assist with uh, research and installation of historical markers. Um, I specified uh, up helping with the ongoing uh, research that might be connected with updating the AAHI. Um, and again, this doesn't negate that you know, uh, uh, commissioners might be doing this as well. It's just additional uh, hands to do that. Um, also, the additional resources that staff have to conduct this research. As staff, we have um, I have access to something called CPAN, which is an online <coughs> access to the land use <coughs> records. Um, also, uh, support you know generally for the committee's oral history project cemeteries and commemoration events kind of as a, on an as needed sort of basis. Um, this is basically 20 hours a week. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Jordan? Yeah, <clears throat> so um, sorry if it's already stated in here, but what does the other half of this position do? Or is this just a part-time position at 20 hours? It is a full-time position, and the twenty, the other twenty hours would be up to DPT. D, D, they would be a planner, a her, uh, I assume, within the heritage branch. But I don't. Um, yeah, the, Denise is yeah. not incorrect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and, exactly. That would be it. Would they would be in the heritage resources branch, and um, most likely develop very similar to what my position was with the history commission: development review, uh, planning studies, th those sorts of things. The yeah. Not too liaison. Um, I will I will point out that you know one of the reasons this is several pages long is because I looked at um, other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. So in Prince William, um, they have a uh, what they call a liaison, but she is fifty percent. It is a fifty percent of a planner. She's actually um, higher ranking than Denise. <laughs> She's uh, she is the principal planner for the um, for the heritage planning group within the um, the Department of Planning at in Loudoun County. Um, and so they have 50% of her time and then they have additional staff. They have about four um, people all together who, who look at who do heritage planning in Loudoun County. So those additional three will also uh, support the um, the uh, it's the Heritage Commission. Um, uh, the uh, Prince William County has a um, ha actually has the te technically has the, the head of the Department of Planning on their commission in an ex officio sort of notice wit manner uh, station, and then there's uh, there's a statement in their bylaws that that planning helps whenever they need it. 
um, the, you know, in terms of staff support. Um, and then you have uh, other uh, jurisdictions like Arl Arlington and Alexandria, where you have staffs that are not part of a planning department, but are specifically heritage um, resource protection staff. And, and so they do a lot of the programmatic work uh, in con and work with um, you know, citizen uh, boards to, to help realize the, their heritage plans. Yeah. Um, so you've so. done a great job of doing this. Just, is this going to be a, um, what does the ARB have? Do they have a part-time person too, or do they have a full-time person? Denise can explain that. <laughs> she can figure out how to unmute herself. <laughs> Sorry, you all disappear. <laughs> um, yes, so the ARB, um, the ARB position is a is the principal planner. So I am now the principal preservation planner uh, for the Department of Planning and Development. So, think we're about huh. equals there. So you are um, equal now. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to demote you. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. But um, the history commission position is um, what was a planner too, and then. Uh, I was promoted and it became a planner three. But anyway, the architectural review board m mostly does architectural review board administration. We that's a, a, most of my position is taken up with work for the architectural review board. That's um, there are 14 historic uh, his, um, historic overlay districts. I'm working on the planning study for the uh, 16th because we will have had Holland Hills come online. Um, Holland Hills has 400 properties that are all of a sudden going to be um, part uh, you know, under an ARB review. And uh, Holmes Run Acres, will, if, if that one passes, has a, another 300 plus. So um, the architectural review board position is, uh, there's a, a lot more support that the architectural review board needs. But it's half time also. That was no, it's full time. Uh -huh. it's, well, the interesting thing is the the ARB is not at the same level as the History Commission. The a ARB is a sub organization within DPD, right? No, it's, the, no, it's an appointed body. It's it's uh, it's just regulatory. So they have a regulatory role. They enforce a zoning good. ordinance the historic district zoning ordinances. When I was looking at various websites to see how we should update ours, and I had looked at ARB for ideas and comparisons as benchmarks, I was told that I was going down the wrong path yeah. because yeah. yes, and I had that in writing. So yeah. anyway. Different. It, it, it is different because there's a regulatory role. So they're a, a, a board that has authority um, in in that zo zoning um, capacity process. Yes, yeah. process. Right. There, they so have... there is there is a difference. You, the History Commission is non-regulatory. The ARB is regulatory. They're a board, we're a commission. Um, I, I see Barbara. Uh, uh, Ann Barnes also had her hand up, so Ann and then Barbara. Hi, thanks for letting me ask my question. I think it's it's very obvious to me that um, this work is already being done by a certain person. <laughs> Am I answering my own question? Denise. <laughs> is that? Yeah, yes. There's a lot of yes. work that, okay. Yes, there is a All lot right. of, yep. Yeah. Um, it, and I have mostly taken that on as uh, comp time. I, I do my job and then I do history commission work um, in the evenings or on weekends. Oh, and wow. and I have and I've just been um, accumulating comp time. So that's a, another uh, thing to point to um, for the, you know, to substantiate the need for the position. OK, thank you. Thought so thank you. All right, Barbara. OK, a couple of questions. Um, first of all, I understood originally, Denise, that your position as it is now is our liaison. You were it was going to be filled. Um, and it, it is weird. 
we're yes we we are working on um interviewing so, yep okay so that's great so my next question is is this going to be in addition to that person or a replacement if it's an addition that's good but i you know i think that a half 20 hours a week isn't it depends on what particular project. So I'm, I'm all for the idea, but my point is if, if it's going to be, okay, you will have that, therefore you don't have um, essentially the liaison that you can, then, then I'm not, what is that? So some, I'm yes. sorry. Somebody's shaking something. Mm -hmm. So anyway, my, I want to- That was my cat, I apologize. I. I was attempting to see if this would be in addition to our liaison, which is really what we need, or uh, not. And the the something I've wanted for for a long, long time is to pay for nominations. We have a whole list of of nominations for our our inventory that just don't get done, and so you know that would be a, a major effort. So. And to answer Subi, they are regulatory, we're advisory. That's what that's what we do. So anyway, I'm curious to know if this if if this happens, what happens to the liaison? Well, it, yeah, Go if ahead. it happens, you wouldn't necessarily need a liaison because you'd have an administrator. But you'd you, have okay in twenty in twenty hours a week. Yes, twenty hours twenty hours a week devoted to the history commissions. Work. So it's just I say to you under under the the last going back the last two years because we keep getting more and more uh, wide jobs and look at the CNI and I know you spent more than twenty hours a week because you and I were emailing at ten thirty at night so my question is realistically is twenty hours going to work Nan Tammy's shaking her head yes so that's my question. Yeah, I second Barbara's question, because it seems to me that liaison plus 20 hours, you know, we need at least that. I Honestly, I feel like we could use a full-time person. Yes. I, I do. Um, it's, you know, you do a lot of extra work, Denise, and um, and we could even use, you know, more than that. I mean, I just feel like there's um, there's so much. What's the harm of asking for a first-time person, a full-time person, rather? I mean, you know, you don't ask, you don't get, and you're probably going to get more if you ask for a full-time person, as long as you can justify it, than you would get if you ask for uh, half-time. I, I would agree. I think you need a full-time person. I really do. If it's just one. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Yeah. And I was, I, since I'm a newbie and I'm not, well, I'm, I'm not in the county, but I, I was thinking the same thing and I, I think you, we should just do it without any um, hesitation or um, trying to communicate like we're supplicants or anything. We just ask. Yeah, say, right. This is okay. this is justified, and and we wouldn't be asking if it wasn't. Right. 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 My be. concern would be sharing a person. What if big projects come up with both at the same time? then that person is split trying to figure out what to do first. Mm -hmm. So it's all the more reason for full time, I think. Yeah. What a wonderful dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can get that person. Oh, the, the, the job description is huge. Come on, guys. Yes. This is really, this is just huge. Denise, how much you spend now with your comp time? And, and there's only so much you can, but. Well, um, so I will say that I have well, it's hard to tell. It's hard to say. I, 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 right now, I'm I'm so well over the limit uh, that I I cannot figure out what I'm going. I'm really concerned. It's only March, and I'm I I'm already going to lose hours. But I don't know how I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Would, would this have to be That's advertised? Is that the way this works in the county that they advertise for somebody? Or? Yes. I mean, this this would be a newly created position in the Department mm -hmm. of Planning and Development. Um. I. I um, it, and then there there would be an open and competitive um, process for uh, sol soliciting um, and yeah. select. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is um, let me just say that when the the commission was created in 1969, I believe. Yes. Eight. 
and the population of the county was 500,000. It just, I think it was 5, 510 or 520. You guys are historians, you can go check it. We're closing in on 1.2 million. That's right. More than that. Yeah. It gets more than that. Yeah. So, all, and we're asking for one person. <laughs> I mean, I, let's just put this into perspective a bit and go for it. So, yeah. All right. And and I think striking while the iron is hot, I think that this is a particularly good time to ask when the evidence of um, of our work is right there and of Denise's work um, is right out there for all to see um, right. the benefit. Right. Um, I think that this is the time to ask. Yeah, I agree. Especially Absolutely. if we're turning down things that people are asking us to do. Yes. So I would like to amend the motion whenever we get to that point and go for mm -hmm. the do, do it. We don't have a motion yet, do we? No. No. Okay. Actually, I did put a motion yes. on the. So we could have discussion. I thought you did. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sorry. Okay. We're still thinking about this. Okay. I support but, your amendment, Jordan, before you say it. <laughs> <laughs> and I second the change. <laughs> um, so, I, okay. I, so, or do you? Lynn, I'll just be conducting. just I'm going to ask just one question of Denise, um, just as part of the discussion of the pre prior first motion, which is, is there a downside to um, to asking for more and just seeing what happens? None that I could could anticipate. OK, Do, we're we're um, uh, starting. We're getting in uh, uh, at the early um, end of things and there'll be a discussion when you all submit your um, just statement of justification and your uh, scope for this position mm -hmm. uh, it will be reviewed and then sent to um, the office of management and budget and they will review it and send it back to us so we're starting that and i think i, I mean i i like the strategy you ask yeah. for what you want yeah. right and right. and yeah. what's the worst they could say can I ask a question? If we get letters of support from various people in the in the county for this, would that help? I I don't. That's how I don't know. Yeah, I I because it's a but it's management and budget. But I don't know. The, you know who, is I can't. The, uh, who is the what? Do you know the name of the budget analyst who is t to whom this account is assigned? I'm sorry, I don't know. The board of supervisors is our. That's who we advise. Yeah, they know we've been working. That's the best recommendation we can get. So maybe yes, we, we can lobby with them. We do have <laughs> uh, well, we do have support um, among the various board uh, supervisors uh, for some sort of you know. I mean, there there hasn't been any concrete discussion of how many hours or or what the position is, but for support for our staff and you know, for greater support for us, it's is out there. Um, so, uh, you know, Jordan, if you wanted to make that amendment, or I could with it might be simpler if I withdraw my motion. And Cheryl, as the, I'm I'm sorry, but as the chair. I think you're you're you making the motion carries a certain weight to it. I would think, if you feel comfortable with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm perfectly comfortable. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> maybe Jordan, you should make the uh, maybe. Okay, yeah, maybe I should make the motion. Okay, the whatever you say, Cheryl. I'm sorry. sorry, he he he's. He's got the he's scraping on the Venetian blinds in the room, because um, he wants to see out the window. Um, so, the cat so the back. how much the cat more the back is there? Back. So we do have to still do our, our just Jordan. Go ahead and amend the motion. Okay, we'll, I'd like we'll to amend the motion to move for a full time position, staff position, to assist the Fairfax County History Commission. I second the amendment. Yeah, I do too. Lynn, okay, so then you can conduct a vote on the amendment and then we conduct a vote on the motion, the first motion. Okay, all right, so let's, let's do that. So um, all in favor of this new amendment to the original motion, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed Aye. or abstained? Okay, then the amended motion uh, passes. The amendment. The amendment. Passes. Amendment. The amendment to the motion, right, passes. Um, so, so now can we get the statement of the motion with the amendment in it. Okay, I can do that. Um, okay. So. I move that the History Commission request that um, that the commission be assigned a full time planner to position within the Department of Planning and Development. I second. Okay. I think we've had our discussion, but anybody else? OK, all in favor of this motion. All right. Aye. 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 Opposed Aye. or abstained? Motion carries. Full time request it is. Yeah. Of course, Denise knows she's worth two people. Yes. <laughs> we know that. We know that. Yes. And she's got to figure out a way to take that comp time. <laughs> yeah, or else she's not going to be here and then nothing's going to get done. I mean, that's just kind of crazy. Okay, and so uh, as I said, you know, the the document that I sent out is a draft. If you have any comments, you know, questions, changes, things like that, I'm sorry that I can't lock the door from the inside. <laughs> 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 we will uh, <laughs> feel free to can do that. But to continue on with um, <laughs> with committee reports, uh, Lynn, you're up, and I'm going right. to open up the blind so the cat can see out. <laughs> That's good, good thinking there. Okay, I'm gonna, you all have a copy of the committee report from our uh, February 23rd meeting. It just happened last week. Um, I have to say it was one of the most um, entertaining committees, I've, committee meetings I've been in in a while. We had a lot of fun, um, especially during our close. Bulleted is included in the agenda. A couple of other uh, line items. Um, the date is November 5th. We've got an OK on Sherwood. Should we go live? Um, I'm beginning with uh, uh, POTS and Channel 16 just to kind of be on the on the safe side. Uh, and in terms of content, our conversation led us down a path of there being a multitude of different ethnic groups that populated this land that we now call Fairfax. We talked about a Genesis time. Looking back to the 1600s, 1700s, there were Irish back then, second, third generation. Irish didn't like that term, so call themselves American. So some of our other census data is a little bit hard. Mary sent on to me um, a, a wonderful uh, reference, which I'm going to be sending to the committee. She sent this to me yesterday from the National Archives database. And uh, Mary, I want to uh, thank you for that, too. If, if you weren't over there, I'm not so sure we'd have a copy of that let me see if i can see what you sent me so i can yeah it's um the genealogy personal history passenger lists immigration portion of this uh database so stay tuned we've got russians that were here um in the 1700s 1800s so it's quite a, a, a lively obviously group of people one thing that didn't make it into the agenda a um, couple of things, possible titles for the conference, subtitles were Fairfax County Part 2, Sowing the Seeds of the Melting Pot in Fairfax County. We, uh, Mike has kind of, uh, Mike Irwin, that was his idea. We uh, have abridged that a bit, possibly to early immigrant groups in Fairfax County, Sowing the Seeds of the Melting Pot, or just early immigrant groups, Sowing the Seeds of today's Fairfax County. So that'll be discussed at the next um, committee meeting, which will be on the 23rd of March. And um, I had I, somehow that got left out of this. But anyway, so we do have that set up. And so I think Denise knows that too, because the email went out to her. Um, anything else that from committee members that are here that we need to add in? Okay. That's, we're, that's good enough. Okay. Awards. Um, we had a very short uh, meeting on the 24th. Um, discussed a number of, of contacts, uh, content uh, uh, topics. The 
one piece that uh, Elise and I will be working on is to add to the History Commission's website page. And I'm not sure why we didn't do this like years ago. The names every single year of all the awardees and sort of a copy of what the award looks like. And I think that would or the, the content of the award, the reason for which they were given the award. So um, Elise has and reports from way far back. So just stay tuned. We have uh, kind of a uh, deadline for that website edition is the 1st of May. Um, still need to get a better sense of, and this is will be in conjunction with the advocacy group a lot. Sometimes our, our committees overlap a bit. Uh, we really, really want to get the awards committee really wants to get the information out to Fairfax County Public Schools and to local private schools about the awards that we give. Um, so just stay tuned. That is still kind of in, in flux and we'll be working with advocacy on that. Um, Steve, anything else? Uh, no, that's about it. The on my Jack end. Hiller Award, we want to we want to promote that. We do already have one Jack Hiller submission. I think that's it. We have no date set for a follow on meeting. OK, done. Cheryl, you're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, Mary, do you want to cover AAHI since Phyllis is not here? You're muted, Mary. <laughs> oh, I've been sitting here since 630 because I had a prior meeting with the GMU guys. Anyway, um, March 8th, this coming Tuesday, AHI meeting at 2.30. Uh, and we'll be discussing what we learned from the capstone uh, men and some other possibilities that we could uh, do with that database. So uh, stay tuned. I'll send you a link ahead of time uh, explaining what I'm talking about. It's, it's a possibility of adding photos uh, to um, be put in what they call exhibits on the um, with a database. So uh, stay tuned for that. And Barbara and I have been working uh, very hard. Barbara's did some real heavy lifting on this uh, to nominate the AAHI uh, to the National Alliance of Preservation Commissions for a best practice of commissions, public outreach advocacy category. Uh, and this is something that uh, they had like four different categories uh, for commissions, and this is what we worked on. Uh, Barbara did the 750 word essay, uh, so um, she gets the gold stars for this. So it's a 60 days from now, we'll hear uh, as to whether uh, we are awarded anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to interrupt to say that I had um, Mary and I were equal partners in this, and Phyllis helped as she could, and uh, Denise and Liz helped, and we ended up with exactly 750 words. Not, I mean, that's what <laughs> we didn't we we knew we had, and so little edits did this and that. So it <laughs> if they count right on the button. So it's a long shot, but I mean, why not? Right. I love it. I think that's great. Yeah, I think we, so too. We think it's super and so we'll see what happens. So anyway. Who knows? 60 days. I didn't even know when they'd let us know, Mary. Is it 60 yeah. days? Okay. It's on the website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And I, I will just point out that in uh in Phyllis's written report, she notes that uh you need to uh, submit any additional templates or, or changes right. to the committee co-chairs by March 15th. Correct, thank you. Um, yeah. Right, uh, Gretchen is not here and she did not submit any sort of re written report this month. Elise is not here and I do not believe there were any, um, that she did not submit any written reports this month. Uh, Anne is, um, also not here and also similarly, I do not have a written report from her. Um, uh, which brings us back to uh, Mary. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Subi. Uh, um, just on uh, behalf of the advocacy committee, since go ahead, yes. here, 
I just wanted to thank uh, all the committee chairs for submitting their 2021 annual report input on time. We got 90% um, uh, timely response. We're just missing one committee and that's for you know some good reasons. So really, really, really well done guys. Thank you so much. Okay. Everybody go pat yourself on the back. That is really awesome. Thank you. Um, Very cool. And, and thank you for, for noting that, Subi. Worth, worthwhile. Um, so, Mary, we're back to markers, marker project, and then cemetery preservation. Okay. Uh, for the marker committee, the frying pan um, marker, Civil War uh, at the frying pan uh, meeting house has been picked up. So, that's being repainted. And they said take eight to 12 weeks uh, before it's returned. Uh, I am planning to uh, do a little bit of rewriting on the guidelines uh, for the um, marker text. We have in the past years, you know, realized that oral tradition is an important part uh, to history and oftentimes is the way the history has been uh, related and passed down. So I'm going to add uh, something into the guidelines, uh, which I'll ask, you know, share with the committee, et cetera, um, to see if uh, I'm getting across the, what we need to say about um, it will be acceptable. Primary sources are still our, our um, primary uh, choice but oral tradition is important too. Um, and I had a wonderful definition of oral tradition and now I can't find it, but uh, I have it somewhere. Uh, the marker project has uh, been announced, it's been in newspapers, it's been on WTOP, NBC, et cetera. Uh, submissions are very low. So we encourage you to, if any children, grandchildren in your lives who would like to, um, you know, submit an idea for a marker. Uh, it's all online and um, we would appreciate that. Uh, this month we're getting ready to uh, get the voting committee together and start orientation and training because they're the ones who get the first look at the submissions uh, and make recommendations. With uh, cemetery, all that I have to say is um, update is that uh, Germantown had the opportunity to, Germantown Cemetery had the opportunity to have GPR, uh, thanks to Jason Burroughs at Mount Vernon. And it was really interesting to see, and they have found on half of the cemetery, about 20 more, 20 to 25 more possible graves. So who knows what they'll find in the other uh, half. Uh, and I'm working with the sons and daughters on Woodburn Road or Pine Ridge Park. Uh, to help them set up trustees. They have trustees, uh, but they want them officially, you know, recognized through the circuit court. So I'm uh, working with them. I'm also got on my to-do list uh, to continue working and get an MOU between our Fairfax County Cemetery Preservation Association and the Cemetery Committee of um, History Commission. That's it. Thank you, Mary. Any questions or for Mary? Moving on, Esther, ethnic and oral history. Thank you. I will be brief because we do have a bit time coming up. The ethnic and oral history committee met. We did not have a quorum, so no decision were made as far as voting or motions. Uh, we discussed the direction we're moving forward in. We've got seven oral history interviews with past supervisors or leaders. And what we've determined is that we need to add some people like a Suzanne Levy, who was in the Virginia room for a very long time and has a lot of information uh, about what's happened in this county. Some other folks that are from other places. So it might be called leaders 
rather than former supervisors. Uh, we will do our eighth interview on March 25th. Unfortunately, the Board of Supervisors has bumped us for some of the interview time that we had scheduled. So when they say they need the TV station, I can't do a thing about that. We only have one interview that day. And Lynn is conducting that. It's Naomi Zevin. Oh, good. Oh, good. Great. And you know, if we had that version of time, or team rather, team meetings, we could do a 30 hour yes. interview with Naomi. Yes, with okay. Naomi. And yes. she would do it too. She would. <laughs> so we will persevere to get others to interview. I have some folks uh, that are former. Uh, leaders in the county that I will contact as soon as I can get another date from Channel 16. That would be in the next quarter, which is April, May, June, I believe. Thank you so much. Our next meeting is uh, March 22nd, 7 p.m. Teams virtual meeting. And I saw Sally come on. Is she still on? Mm -hmm. So uh, I did want to say hi, Sally, because we missed you. But we look forward to having you back with the committee. So that's the end of my report. Sweet dreams, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Esther. Thank you for staying up with us. Um, resident curator program, Bob, do you have anything further that you want to add? Um, yeah, maybe, uh, okay, the, um, we met this morning. We had a, awesome. a meeting on the, um, uh, Margaret White Gardens. I'm not sure that, um, that was mentioned, but if it wasn't, if it was great. If it wasn't, now, you know, so <laughs> there you go. It's an interesting application. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. All right. Um, bylaws and I, I think there is an update in Lynn's report about bylaws. I think those are finally proceeding and will go to the, um, the Board of Supervisors. Uh, there's no ARB report from Elise. David. What's going on in Fairfax uh, City? Um, in, um, in, the, in September of 2020, in response to the events that happened in May and June, um, the city of Fairfax created a stakeholders advisory committee. Um, well, let me back up and simply say very quickly that during the month of June, we took the steps very quickly to um, uh, remove some uh, rather onerous markers that were had been put in the city. Um, birthplace of the Confederate battle flag, um, a a uh, a monument on Route 50 Fairfax Boulevard to Peyton Anderson, put there by the United Daughters of the Confederacy in 1927. We renamed our middle school. We renamed the street that the high school was on. We did all these things within a matter of a few weeks. Then in, the, in September, we established a, a stakeholders advisory committee. Um, we had over 120 people uh, apply to serve on this committee. We did um, group and individual structured interviews over a period of a couple of weekends. And we had 18 people that served on it from across the city. They're very diverse group of people from from all different persuasions and perspectives on American history. And they worked for uh, 10 months to come in with recommendations, including uh, the renaming of streets. We have about 28 to 30 um, streets in the city of Fairfax that are directly tied to the Confederacy. And um, as you can imagine, there the these streets 
uh, have close to six, anywhere from, depending on how you define it, 600 to 1,500 residences that are tied to these streets. So um, there were recommendations for certain, they worked on this for over uh, 10 months and came back to the to the city council with recommendations for name changes, as well as um, uh, changing um, uh, markers and monuments that remain, as well as the city seal. So we have been working and moving forward on this initiative over the last three months, and the city council now is receiving um, recommendations, and the city council itself are working on um, possible uh, name changes of streets, as well as um, revising some of the historic markers that are in the city. As you can imagine, this is a not, not only a Herculean task, but also one that is um, that is attended by some very strong emotions and perspectives. So we're not finished yet, but uh, I haven't I haven't gone into a lot of detail with with all of you on this, but most of these uh, these street names and monuments and markers predate the establishment of the city of Fairfax when the when the town of Fairfax was part of the county. Um, but more to come on that, but we're we are working forward towards um, some sort of decisions here in the next 90 to 120 days. Second thing I wanted to report again was that uh, Old Town Hall, which was built in 1900, um, as you may know, has been had. If you've been by it at all, it's just, the whole front of it is covered with uh, temporary supports, and um, we had a collapsed pillar in the middle of the night, and um, it, it took us over a year and a half to figure out what is the appropriate thing to do. We didn't want to do any harm. Uh, Doug Gilpin and uh, from the University of Virginia, as well as John Mott, advised us on the next steps moving forward. We um, last month, since we last, since we had our last county uh, history commission meeting, awarded a six hundred thousand dollar contract to restore the front of the building. This work will be done between right now and uh, November of two thousand twenty-two. And um, the the building's front will be restored to its original appearance in 1900. I have um, there's probably several other things that I could report, but those are the two that we are uh, expending a lot of our time on right now. So that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank Hi. you. Thank you for those updates. Hmm? Um, yeah. No. I. You know, the Confederate Names Task Force did present its uh, report to the county um, earlier in in February, um, and uh, and so that that's now on the website for anybody who wants to take a look at that. Um, I think that they are asking for yet another survey, <laughs> uh, and so it'll be a while before the. Uh, I think it's not until the summer that the the board will actually come to any sort of decisions. I um, will say one thing that may be of interest to everybody. Um, the county of, of Ar Arlington County renamed US Route 29 from the Potomac River to where it ends at uh, Seven Corners to a Langton um, Boulevard, as we, you probably know that. Um, 29 goes through the county of Fairfax and goes directly through the city of Fairfax. And um, we have decided that we are going to work collaboratively with the county. It's, it's kind of complicated, but on the eastern end of the city, there's a section of the road which is still called Lee Highway. And then when it gets to Fairfax Circle and goes west to Camp Washington, it's named Fairfax Boulevard, but also Lee Highway. It has two names. And then when it gets to Camp Washington, it splits and US 50 goes west to the city limits towards Fair Oaks. And then 29 continues south 
in a, it's actually in a westerly direction at that point, but it's really south to the to the to the county line, and that's called uh, the Lee Jackson Memorial Highway. So uh, I've been in discussions with both James Walkinshaw and Dahlia Palchek, and the county and the city want to do something collaboratively that makes sense for the entire roadway from its entrance into the county at Seven Corners to where it goes into, um, um, I guess, Prince William or Fauquier County. I guess it's Prince William, Prince William, south of Fairfax County. Um, we don't know what that's going to be yet, but um, that's one area where the city and the county are going to have to work collaboratively. And and it is, I don't want to get too much into the weeds on this thing, but there, as you all probably know, VDOT has certain categories of roads throughout the state. And um, the, this road uh, is of a threshold which requires um, that the county and the city together submit a proposal to VDOT for approval. Uh, the other parts of the uh, there's other roads within the city of Fairfax, which um, also are up for consideration for renaming, including Old Lee Highway, which runs through my neighborhood. And, and then, of course, we have residential streets named and there's about 28 of them that are um, that have Confederate related names. We made a decision that names that are directly related to the Civil War and the insurrection against the Constitution in 1861 is the is the dividing line in terms of our decision making with respect to street names. There are names of family names that go back pre in the antebellum period that are named for slaveholding families. Um, we have decided that at this point, that's going to be our la line of demarcation with respect to name changes. Um, that anyone that took up violent um, opposition to the U.S. Constitution, and and we all know that the Constitution was su substantially changed in 1865 to address some of the issues that weren't addressed at the Constitutional Convention. So, um, it's this is not easy. But um, it has to be done. It's the right thing to do. We're going to do it. And um, um, so, but we're going to do the, 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 the Lee Highway, the Lee Jackson Memorial Highway name changes in collaboration with the county. Yeah. And um, that's about all I have to report on it. But we want something that makes sense regionally mm -hmm. on that particular road. So. I didn't mean I wasn't planning on getting into all those details, but it's um, anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. Yeah, I, I know that you're waiting and that's why I had made the comment. Um, right. That we're and still, it's not, still working it's not, on it. It's not a question of are we going to change it? It's just a question of what we're going to change it to and when we're going to do it. Um, all right. And I think then moving on to my last comment is just to say that thank you very much to Subi for um, for serving as the website coordinator. Uh, she she is moving on to bigger and better things that perhaps and uh, and so I'm going to continue to serve. I'll, I'll go back to serving as website coordinator, at least in the interim. Um, we may want to rethink this you know, role a little bit, you know, perhaps if we have staff, staff will handle that. Um, all together, so you know, <laughs> uh, um, or maybe advocacy wants to do something with it. So, but in the meanwhile, if you have website changes, just shoot me an email. Anybody have an announcement? Lynn, uh, in honor of Women's History Month, we can't forget this. Um, I will be docenting at Tur Turning Point Suffragist Memorial on the 12th of March, and one other piece in terms of Clifton. Uh, I've been writing a history column for the Clifton Living Magazine now for sev several years, and we're now taking a look at uh, writing some columns on the four living, currently living former mayors of Clifton. So, um, Esther, you'll be interested in some of that because I think there'll be some overlap with the uh, oral history, but there, there are folks in Clifton that are, are 
aging and we need to hear what their stories might be about that land. Yes. Okay, um, that's it. All right, uh, Tammy and then Janae and then Esther. Um, I just turned in to, um, to a Bell, the Bellhaven Apartments um, on Route 1, a um, proposal for a marker. It's a result of a proffer um, when the building was going in. Martin Tillett, a local historian, had arranged for that. He's kind of a neighborhood guy, neighborhood historian guy, and he had arranged for that. And I worked with him and um, Mary also helped out and took a look at the marker that we developed. So we've turned that into the company and we're going to see what they're going to say about it. So that's kind of fun. And then the other thing is I actually did sign up to be a judge at Nat National History Day and I have no idea how it will go, but I'm excited about it. Um, and it did occur to me, like, um, have we ever tried to sort of scout out there at, you know, one of those, um, I guess it's like a science fair, but for history, at one of those history days for um, for anybody to apply for our awards. I kind of wondered, like, are there awards for that age group? And maybe maybe we should send a scout to National History Day. <laughs> so just a thought. Um, trying to think now, uh, Esther, who else? Oh, Esther, Janae, and then Esther, sorry. And then um, Carol. Janae? Sorry, I was sitting back thinking, okay, Esther, do your thing. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to follow up uh, what David Meyer said. As some of you know, I was on the Confederate Name Task Force Committee. And I did go and testify this last week before the Board of Supervisors uh, expressing my concern. You know, we had this 23,000 people responded to the survey. And we sent out 400,000 postcards, all these hearings, all these people. There were a lot of people involved. About 50% of our work was with developing this survey. Uh, Department of Transportation really did the heavy lifting on this, is tabulating them and so on. But uh, at the end, our chair decided not to use it. Janine. Yes. Oh, I can't talk about it. Well, no, no. It's just 